the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out here anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Let's go. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Come on in. The East is where we're from. Blessings, blessings, blessings. The 12 tribes of Israel. In 721 BC, the Assyrian king, he took us down, we fell. With the great escape, we went through the Euphrates. The Lord held the water still. Blessing, Shalom, Shalom, come on in. To a land where no mankind dwelt, we went. The twelve tribes of Israel. That's who we be, we be. Manasseh, the Cubans, Ephraim, from Puerto Rico, and Valley from the Isles of Hawaii. The Lord is calling back Israel. Zebulon, from Panama, Gad, the North American Indians. Calling back Israel. Simeon, the Dominicans. A highest gathering Israel. That's right, Ahaya's Gathering Israel. I'm Elder Rikosh Yara of the Gathering of Christ Church here with our weekly podcast, okay, or blog talk, whatever you would like to call it. I'm going to get blog talk all set in the background because I really want to hear your take on what's going on in the earth right now, okay? Now, I'm going to set up blog talk in a couple of seconds. In the meantime, please hit the like button. Hit the like button for me, please. We're going into blog talk in about, what, 30 minutes, 40 minutes? And I want to hear your take on this, okay? Whether you've been born here in America or abroad, I sure would like to hear your take on this topic. And please hit the like button hit the like button for me please i'm setting up the block uh the blog talk right now to be set at 7 30. we're gonna jump right in uh the topic permanently entrenched at the bottom at the bottom is the topic Do we care? Does anyone care? Um, the systematic entrench entrenchment is what I want, would like to talk about. All right. How do we get here and how to dig out of this hole? How to dig out of the hole permanently entrenched at the bottom. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. 
All right, blog talk is all set. Hopefully it doesn't give, it, give us any issues this evening. You know, during an election year, I'll tell you, and during COVID also, during the pandemic, we were getting a lot of issues with, with our blog talk. But hopefully uh, everything goes well here. All right, studio is in. Yes, we good. So in about one hour, we'll jump over to Blog Talk. Again, I'm Elder Ricard Shaw, the Gathering of Christ Church, here with our weekly conversation. Yeah, fully entrenched at the bottom will be our topic, okay? How you doing, Nina? Let me see my people up in here. Tony, how are you? Don? Amy, Hi. All right. True Judah for life. I like that name. Lanessa. Lanessa Terry, how are you? Yatazah Kazak Hebrew Harris. Hebrew Harris in the house. Erica. Yes, yes, yes. Michelle, how are you, Michelle? Angela Holloway. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a singer's name. Yes, yes, yes. Let's jump right in. Elder Lawyer will be ready in a couple of minutes. He'll just text me once he's ready, okay? Fully entrenched at the bottom. Now, I'm going to make some announcements in, the, in, in a moment, but I want to jump right in. It seems as if it's systematic. Like the political system we have in place has been established to keep the status quo. The status quo is our people who have built this country at a permanent, as a permanent working class at the bottom of the pyramid. How do we get here? How do we overcome this above all and who are the enemies utilized to keep us fully entrenched at the bottom? That and more will be identified in this particular broadcast. And I need, I need to hear your take on why it seems as if our people, the tribe of Judah in particular, cannot excel. What are your opinions in, in the matter? I sure would like to hear them. Hit the like button. Now, before I go into that, let me, uh, let me go to a scripture real quick. I'm going to start at Deuteronomy 28. And then we're going to move to the political side of it. Because for people that cannot grow beyond 15% of the population here in America in particular, they sure pay a lot of attention, a lot of attention to us and are concerned on which way we'll vote. Every election cycle. Now I need y'all to think about that for a moment. Okay, I mean, since forever, the black man in America, the black woman, who are the from the tribes of Judah, the tribe of Judah have been permanently stunted when it comes to up in our population. We're entrenched 13% to 15% of the population if you want to believe their count. Let's say for the sake of argument, they're right. We've been controlled not to multiply beyond measure. On top of that, there's a systematic undermine. And even though we're the quote unquote minority, everyone is focused on where our heads are at every four years. Why? Could it be that the system was put in place politically to keep us stagnant? Could it be they're measuring whether or not our people will continue to go for the tricks? 
the lies, the deceptive political tactics to make us believe they truly care for us, but really they're making sure, they're just checking where we are, so to retool the system to keep us at the same place, in the same place. And how much of it are we complicit? Someone says, Joseph Judah says, I watch IUIC, but I am stumbled here. Well, if you're getting the knowledge of the Almighty and it's leading you towards the truth, go where you'll actually be fed. Go where you'll be fed, okay? And if, you, if you're stumbling with anything we're teaching, hey, 515 6059327 I'll be happy to answer anything that might be stumbling you all right on our side when it comes to the word as far as I'm concerned whichever group people are a part of they're still my brothers they're still our family we're the children of Israel and we have bigger my, uh, me in particular I have bigger fish to fry OK, I really have to focus on more, more of what we all, you know, can agree upon than the divisiveness that comes with groups. All right. I wanted to put that out there. But if you have anything that you're stumbling on, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions when it comes to the doctrine that's taught within the gathering of Christ Church. OK. Now, and again, if you call in, it don't have to be a debate or anything. You ask me a question, I'll answer according to the scriptures. All right? It's that simple. Now, jumping right in, let's go directly to the scriptures. Let's go now to Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 okay Deuteronomy let me go here first Deuteronomy 28 now the reason why I usually go to Deuteronomy 28 first folks is because this is where where it all began okay our people, the children of Israel, left Egypt after years of hard bondage, okay? If you want to understand the time we were actually in Egypt where they began to oppress us, it was about between 210 and 215 years that we were actually oppressed after the death of Joseph and or Imhotep, Okay? 210 to 215 years we were oppressed while our people Israel the children of Israel made Egypt great okay it was our people where the most high blessed Egypt for, for our sake during a seven-year famine okay seven-year plenteous seven-year famine our God gave us the insight on how to sustain the whole Mesopotamia area and through that the Pharaoh made Joseph second to the king. He ruled all of Egypt. The only way the Egyptians ruled during that time of Joseph was through the throne only. Any legislation, anything went out when it came to how to run a government, how to deal with outside alliances with other countries, it was all led by the 12 sons of Israel. And that's documented. It's not documented just in the Bible. Secular history confirms everything I'm saying. We began to rule the government. And then they politically moved us, moved us out of the way. Okay, through deception after the death of Joseph. Now, eventually, one rose up by the name of Moses. My Shaw. 
The Egyptians wanted to kill the children to thwart the prophecy of a prophet coming out of Israel that would one day rule all of the earth, including the Egyptians. So in fear of this prophet whom the sages warned Pharaohs about, okay, they sought to kill our, our boys, okay? Reproductive rights. Moses escapes as a child in a moat into Egypt where he's raised as an Egyptian child. Eventually, the Most High would use this same boy to not only deal with cognitive uh, planning through war, to make Egypt even greater than it was before as an Egyptian prince. He eventually would come back to Egypt after an exile and lead our people out of Egypt. I like to go back to Deuteronomy 28 because in Deuteronomy 28, brothers and sisters, there's so much we can parallel between our rulership in Egypt, getting deceived politically, by the Egyptians, only to have our God come through and deliver us from the hand of those satanic pagans. Eventually, we walked in the wilderness for a while and landed at Mount Sinai. We, we stayed at Mount Sinai where the 12 pillars are there today. There the Most High gave us the law, and this is where it all begins, the contract. The agreement. This is where the Most High tell us where we should be as a nation of people. What we should do to keep leadership and power over the earth and righteousness. So let's now go to Deuteronomy 28 real quick. When you go to Deuteronomy 28, here's the, here's the contract, the do's and the don'ts. Do us a favor, brothers and sisters. Please hit that like button. The do's and the don'ts. I'm going to go straight to 13. Now, this is where we're supposed to be as a people. Deuteronomy 28 and 13 reads, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. So it was meant for our people to be the legislators, the trendsetters, and righteousness over the earth, where the all, all the other nations, even pagans, would have to what? Fall in line, follow suit. In actuality, we are the Israelites. We are the Israelites. And Israelites, according to God, if following the commandments, are above all people on the earth. And that's not racist. That's just the way it is. The Most High didn't make people, or, or I would say in, in particular, the Most High didn't make it where he would have a separate understanding or nature of things when it comes to order than those on the earth. For example, on the earth, people have choices. On the earth, people have favorites. On the earth, there's a such thing as leaders and followers. And there's, that's no different than in heaven. So to claim that the Most High would put something in us that he's incapable of being is absolutely ridiculous. That means he made man superior in certain areas, which we know is impossible. A man can choose, a man can have a favorite, and the Most High can't. See? See, they made us believe that it's wrong if the Most High has a chosen people. That's what they, that's what they try. That's an asinine crap they, they try to teach us in these Christian churches. 
Oh, no, God loves everybody. Everybody's equal. That's a lie. Common sense. Let me tell you, observable reality tell you that that doesn't exist. There's a pecking order. And I don't care how much we try to ignore the fact that there's a pecking order. There, 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 there has always been a pecking order where someone is on the top and someone's on the bottom. So don't, don't let them try to sell you there's some equality and all this other crap when all people are ruling over you. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. The, the, the question to this is, if the Most High made us the head and not the tail, how did we become the tail? How, how did we fall to such a pass? And who's in position to keep us fully entrenched at the bottom? I believe every four years they check, they check in the temperature to see whether or not our people have actually awakened from the spell, the delusion that keeps us here at the floor of the pyramid. That's why I love to go in Deuteronomy 28 because it say, listen, it spells out clearly how we got here. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou, listen, here's a condition. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and do them. If we prefer God, family, nation, righteousness, if we detest and or come against all perversions, anything that would seek to separate the family. If we stand for what's right according to the word, automatically our people will excel above all people. Now, what makes Israel the head? The law. Being a righteous, lawful people morally moves us above all races of people. Why? They weren't given the law. They weren't given the law, so they're not held to the same consequences for breaking them. The other nations aren't held to the same consequences. Because the law wasn't given to them. So this is what keeps us permanently entrenched at the bottom. Now let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Every four years, like I said, they focus on us. Even though we are a 13% minority, they're so concerned, 13 to 15% of what the black man and woman is thinking in America. Now, I'm going to lead you all to give your answer to why. Why are they so concerned? Why? Why are they so concerned with whether or not our people, black people in America, supports Kamala? Huh? That's one thing. Okay, oh, the lawyer says he's ready. Let me call him in now because I'm, I'm about to get this thing cooking. We're going to get this thing cooking up in here. So let me call him in now so that there's no interruptions here. All right, let's see. All right, let me see. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. All right. Excellent. Bear with me for one second while I bring Elder Lawyer in, folks. Shalom, Elder Lawyer. Hey, shalom, sir. All right, you sound good. Let me just give you a little bit more volume, and we'll be All good right. to go.
All right. All right. Say something now, Elder Lawyer. All right. Shalom. Shalom. That's, Light check one, two. That's absolutely fine right there. That's absolutely fine right there. All right. All right. There you go, Elder Lawyer. There you go. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hit the like button. Now, as we go into this, why are we deeply entrenched, continually entrenched at the bottom? Okay, we're going to talk about this. Now, I'm going to also talk about how we're undermined. How we're undermined. I'm going to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2 and 14, Elder Lawyer, real quick. Yes, sir. Jeremiah and the prophets, and if anyone have any questions, because they're so concerned with whether or not we're going to support Kamala or Trump. Why are they so concerned which way our people are swaying politically or whether or not we are involved in the political system at all? Could it be the system was set up in general to keep us as a slave class and they want to make sure it stays that way? I need y'all to really focus on that. Why well, care about only 13 to 15% of the population and then they try to ignore it for, for three, three and a half years, they'll, they'll just be talking about elder lawyer, black and brown people or minority. Right. They'll usually just use these vague terms when they're really indirectly talking about us. So when it comes to all the benefits with the black and brown thing, they try to throw it out there. But then when we get up to the election, they throw that black brown stuff out of the window when they see that our people aren't what? Going for it anymore. So now they're being specific. What are the black, what is the black man thinking? What is the black woman thinking? And you know why? Mm -hmm. You know why? They understand the prophecy. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. They want to see whether or not there's enough of us who understand how to get above or get out of the trench. And whether or not that resounding voice is moving others to the side of righteousness. And I'm going to tell you why that's a problem for them. The only reason they, the Gentiles, are allowed, are allowed to rule is due to the children of Israel continually sinning. Our sin disqualifies us from our what? our intended position. So this is why they push us in a party and they push all this crazy stuff that they know is anti-Bible with us politically. They'll throw us in a bucket together and say, we're going to make sure everything that's against the Bible, we're going to look at the Bible and everything the Bible says don't do, we'll legislate as something legal to be attached to them. Why? Again, they weren't given the law. We were. So there's consequences for our people breaking them. And by breaking them, we stay under a generational curse at the bottom. Y'all doing a great job with the like button. Elder Lawyer, let's go to Jeremiah 2 real quick. Yes, sir. Let's go to Jeremiah 2. And I also have some news based on traveling that's out there that most people don't even know that's going on. Man, let me tell you, they are changing policy up under everyone's nose while they're keeping people distracted with, with really frivolous conversations. But of course, <laughs> I'm up on these proph prophecies, so anything they're trying to hide and not, not telling you, you're going to find out here. Let's go to Jeremiah 2 real quick, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 2.14. Let's read that. Is Israel a servant 
Now, here's a question that the prophets have. Is Israel a servant? Is he a what? Is he a home-born slave? Is he a home-born slave? That means, is he, were we born to serve other people? Do we believe in our minds, even though we don't say it, it's in our actions, that other people outside of us are just better, that they deserve more, and I know how crazy that sounds. No one would ever, what you talking about? I could, I would never think that when it comes to our people, we the best. Well, hey, it's not panning out like that. Mm. Life dictates that we believe something different. It seems as if we don't want to accept that the programming that keeps us continually on the bottom as a homeborn slave. We're, we're not willing to buck up against or to fight the programming. And we believe, Elder Lloyd, I know a lot of people believe, well, I'll tell you what, if we just don't say anything, if we don't ruffle any feathers, they'll just leave us alone. A lot of our people believe that. They see what's going on. And they say, well, maybe if we keep this thing quiet and I don't say anything, then the judgment of what the nations are doing to all the other people are going to pass them. No, right. it doesn't work that way. Even if you ignore and do nothing at all, they're still coming after you. They're still coming after your children. They're still going to try to put your little boy in a dress and try to tell your daughter that she shouldn't have children. So we believe that being quiet We'll have it where an individual will overt the judgment or the other. If I'm quiet, maybe the nations won't notice me and they'll give me a pass. Mm. So the Bible states here. And that's why the prophets asked this question of the lawyer. If we are Israelites with all the gifts that the nations are taking full advantage of, the whole earth became rich due to our downfall. And I'm going to talk about that. I need y'all to think about that. So that means we had everything. History tells us that we were once a regal, royal, righteous people. Israel, and then the prophets had to ask. God said that you would be the head, not the tail. So how is it Israel is a servant? S something that has flipped. Who flipped it? So the prophets even have, had to ask, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Is he comfortable at the bottom? Mm. We're going to talk about this this evening. And I think we need to be honest with ourselves if we are. The first step with getting over all of this is to admit the truth concerning our condition and stop ignoring it. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Go on, other lawyer. Why is he spoiled? Why is he spoiled? And this is not the spoiled from a coddling standpoint. This is talking about something like old milk. A rotten apple, rotten vegetables. Okay, trash with all types of stuff in it overdue with flies over it. Why has God people spoiled? And above all, why can't we, we admit this is our current condition? Let me tell you folks, sometimes it takes hidden rock bottom 
but sometimes hitting rock bottom is the only thing that would allow one to actually face themselves and do something about their condition and do something. Usually rock bottom is the place where it's like, you know what? If I don't do something about my life, if I don't change something now, I'm going to be on the streets panhandling. So you have to dig into, into oneself and find something that you knew was always there, but yet didn't allow it to flourish. And that's what hitting rock bottom is. And some of our people don't want to deal with the fact because why? The power structure just give us enough just, just, just to survive so that we don't realize how bad our condition is. And that's what socialism is. That's what communism is. Elder Lawyer, I hear, I hear some of the potential in our brothers and sisters, and I hear our people and say, you, well, I'm on Social Security, and I'm getting this amount of money, but if, they told me if I get a job, I'm going to lose my Social Security. And I listen right. to this. I'm like, well, hold up. Are they really trying to help this person? Because right. if you're getting Social Security and this person is able to make a lot of more money, he'll be able to drop himself off that eventually and become what? A productive part of society. And they, they do this purposely. Well, I'm going to give you just enough not to realize how bad your conditions are. And if you try to climb out of it, even though you have the, the propensity, the ingenuity, the, the mindset to do so, will pull everything from you and make your struggle harder. So then it keeps one in one position as a homeborn slave, enough just to not be homeless is what they'll give you. Enough chest. And guess what? I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but that's not good enough for a child of God. That's not good enough. So we're going to talk about this today. Man, I tried to get hold of Elder Gaja with based on some of this uh, footage that I have. But since we're talking about a, a homeborn slave, Since we're talking about this, and I'm going to come back to this scripture in a moment, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. I wanted to know if what I'm about to see politically exists in other countries, predominantly black countries, be it Africa, West India, Haiti, what, I'm about to roll it out. I want to know, and I want to hear Haitians out there, my Levite brothers, if I got some Dominican brothers and sisters out there, come on in. If we have some uh, Guyanians, come on in. Ghanaians, if you're from Africa, come on in, because I need to know if this dynamic that's going on in the United States actually exists where you are. Now, what am, I, what am I saying? I'm going to show you what keeps us, to some degree, politically entrenched at the bottom. And our people really began to understand this. For years, we've ignored this. Is there any other place, Elder Lawyer, where Israel rules, predominantly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, where we can come in as Judah into their countries and dictate what's better for that country and their citizens. Does that exist at all? And if so, I need y'all to come in because I want to talk about this. Mm. I want to talk about this. I have a video queued up. Every four years, Elder Lawyer, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Is the political system set up to keep us fully entrenched at the bottom? And are, are we complicit 
with this undermining, undermining. I'm going to pull you up here, elder lawyer. I need y'all to check this out. Every four years, the conversation, elder lawyer, of reparations come up. You notice? It's ignored the majority of the time, but as soon as the election cycle come up, the news circulations and others actually began to talk about what they knew was the conversation all along. As Egypt, before the Israelites left, made Israel whole. The Most High said, borrow from the Egyptians and leave out with much substance. And it really wasn't borrowing because if it wasn't for us, Egypt would not have become that rich or great of a nation. So we were leaving with what we were owed. Every four years, the conversation come up. And here's the trick, elder lawyer. Esau, who so happened to be the white man, they, they will actually serve it up as, as if they agree with reparations for Judah. When I say Judah, the Negro in America built Wall Street, literally built it. Cotton fields, before that, tobacco fields. We were the work class that built the plantations that turned to corporations. And we did this as slaves, not paid nothing. The, the stock market was built on the blood, sweat, tears, and death of our people who are Judah. Now, the Jewish people experienced, some, experienced something over in Germany. And Germans and the German government and the in, international body and taxpayers in America are still paying for that. And that just happened just a few, uh, a few decades ago. Japanese internment camps here in the United States, they're still getting paid for those things. Our people built the country for free and yet they refuse to give Judah anything. And then the conversation come politically is like, listen, there's a biblical precedent on this. There's a, there's a big biblical precedent that even the Egyptians understood our worth. And this is why we left with much substance out of Egypt. But elder lawyer, every four years, the conversation come up and even white people serve it up. And you would think that our people would agree. Fair use. And oh, the lawyer, I'm going to put this on the screen. I'm going to put it through the, uh, the speakers in the front so you can hear it at the same time. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's, let, let's hear this. And these are all Judites. Black immigrants. Is in the Caribbean, and we okay, we didn't we qualify for the we, we, American we, reparations. Well, here's the challenge: there are so many difficulties with trying to enact reparations, in part because the question is who gets them. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially, I could fall into that category. I honestly have called a pipe dream in the past, and I think that's what it is. Well, it would be nice if there was an now. Now, hold up. Simple now, let me go back, bro, elder lawyer. Now, listen to her. Now, she's this sister right here. She's on CNN. I mean, matter of fact, she's on Fox speaking to uh, uh, this, the Megan girl. And she is from the Caribbean, East India. Now, Daniel Kalua, an actor here in the United States, and I'm going to come back to him in a moment, said, listen, when they try to ask him anything political, he says, listen, I don't have a place to speak politically on my brothers and my, my brothers, the black Americans who built this country. It's unfair to ask me anything politically concerning them because without them, I wouldn't be where I am. He answered them just like that. Mm. That was straight respect from this brother. He said, listen, don't involve me with the politics when black, the black men in America have paved the way for all of us internationally. 
in this fight to be, to one day become free. So I don't know how long he gonna keep his career after saying that. And then there were slaves in the Caribbean. Okay, we didn't didn't qualify for the American reparations. Well, here's the challenge. There are so many difficulties with trying to enact reparations, in part because the question is who gets them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Potentially, I could fall into that category. Now you notice, uh, what's her name? Megan something, elder lawyer. I forgot her last. Some uh, uh, Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly, yes. Now, the white woman didn't say anything. It was the sister shooting it down. Well, I don't know about the reparations. Speaking about our scenarios here coming from the Caribbean. She's saying, well, I don't know whether or not I qualify. Not realizing that if you were to get behind your brothers, it sets an international president where you can actually do what we're doing here to help financially incentivize your people against the oppression. I want to know, is there anything like this in the Caribbean where our people comes into the Caribbean politically to undermine Caribbeans? Does that exist? I'm going to leave that out there. Now you see how Esau does this divide and conquer. And, And guess what? Megyn Kelly know what? The gravity of getting a black person to say this. But we'll look at TV not realizing that this sister right here isn't from here. She was given a lane through our people dying so that that all of our people who look like us everywhere would get treated better with an opportunity. But if you've seen this, what wouldn't flash on your Fox News is she's Caribbean. Now, guess what? I'm not going to say anything is wrong with the sister because she's been programmed to think like this. Is this is why we're permanently entrenched on the bottom? A white woman will serve this up and a sister will from someplace else undermine not and she should understand the plight of being from the children of slaves and what that meant monetarily for the rest of the earth because it happened to our people in the Caribbean too no way if you were to ask me on a program I've been on programs internationally no way if someone asked me should should my Benjamite brothers receive something will I be the one stifling that opportunity I'm going to stand 10 toes down with my brother, the Benjamins, and my sister, the Benjamites. You stick a camera in front of me in the Caribbean and ask me, should the Caribbeans get reparations and see how that thing pan out? They'll cut the commercial so quick. Next one, Elder Lawyer. Hit the like button. Okay, we, we didn't, didn't qualify for we, the we, we, Well, here's the challenge. There are so many difficulties with trying to enact reparations, in part because the question is who gets them? Uh, potentially, I could fall into that category. I honestly have called a pipe dream in the past, and I think that's what it is. It's a pipe dream. Now, the white woman, the Edomite woman didn't say this. Our sister said it. Well, it would be nice if there was an elegant, simple solution to all sorts of complicated problems. You're not actually talking about how to fix those problems if you're only talking about reparations, if we're only debating. Now, here's another brother from Jamaica. Now, what I'm hearing is a tinge of softness also. That's another familiar thing that I'm seeing where the soft men, the buck broken men, are now speaking for our people being from someplace else. There's a pattern here. The whole time, folks, where they've been pushing people in our, on our news, these are people who would undermine their own people. These are the people politically where they come from, undermine their own. So they're using these people against us. The softness, too. This guy does not represent any Benjamite I know. The Benjamites I know are warriors. Okay? 
as if there was an elegant, simple solution to all sorts of complicated problems. You're not actually talking about how to fix those problems if you're only talking about reparations, if we're only debating. Listen, you shouldn't be here talking about anything concerning reparations. You don't have an opinion on what our forefathers struggled with to give you the opportunity to come in and chime on, on, on us politically. I don't think our people even know when we're being disrespected. And I'm going to tell you, can you imagine Elder Lawyer, an Italian going into Ireland telling them how they need to run things and what they should receive? Right. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And here it is, a Jamaican, knowing the impact of their voice and the power of media, would get hit, come to America, elder lawyer, now mind you, the lane for them to come to America was through what we fought for in civil rights. We said, well, nah, we need to make sure that we level this thing off and have our brothers and sisters come over here with us so that we can become more than a 15% uh, minority. We were saying come together so that we can join as Israelites or, or black people to become the majority to actually dictate things as one constituency. That's what we thought. That's when the Pan-African thing opened up and we was like, well, hold up. Let's all come together and now bolster our numbers against them. That's what we were doing right. it for. And now they got Saucy Santana's cousin from Jamaica over here talking about what? Let's go back to this guy. Yes. Well, it would be nice if there was an elegant, simple solution to all sorts of complicated problems. You're not actually talking about how to fix those problems if you're only talking about reparations, if we're only debating. From Jamaica. Who's next? Thing that happened more than a century ago. And what probably happened a century ago. What do you mean happened, and happened a century ago? The United States of America is still spending that money as a corporation that began with chattel slavery. What are you talking about? The corporation that was established a century ago is still a superpower. They get a black man from Jamaica to undermine us by saying, why, why even talk about something that happened a century ago? You tell, you tell the Jewish people not to worry about what happened a few decades ago in Germany and, and see, and see mm -hmm. the response you get. Mm -hmm. And see, white people and other nations understand what lane to stand in and, and what lines not to cross. They understand that because they know that when it's time for them to get in front of the line, that the same people they were quiet about Okay, it's going to back them. See, they understand the line not to cross. Our people. Now, he really think that this is that this is going to benefit our people as a whole by saying this publicly. Never going to do this. It's not clear to me why we're, we're pursuing this thing. Is it fair? He says, it's not even clear to me why we're pursuing it. It's not even clear to me why we're even pursuing this. That, that, that there's... Here it is, the same modus operandi, the innocent man on the right side. It's just posing a question. He's going to serve it up for this sister. And you know, I respect Candace Owens. I respect her mind. I like where the Most High is moving her right now. And I can't wait till in a few years when she realizes it's the Catholics too. <laughs> she may be a little slow getting here, 
But the way she go into things, it won't be too long before she look at her husband and say, hey, it wasn't just, it wasn't just the Jews. But I digress. Now this guy is going to serve it up. No kind of, there's no reparations, no restitution, nothing. Should but. the Irish get reparations, by the way? Irish need not, need not apply signs when they came here during the progressive era? Sure. The reason why the Irish don't get reparations is because they were indentured servants. And when they came over, there was an agreement to replace us as a service class. And they became, they got over all the contracts and, and over all the unions and the fire departments and the police departments. They had something carved out for them in America. That's their reparations. To become what? A political class over all of employment as a, as a people. They didn't need to get reparations because why? The United States government broke the Irishmen off to undermine us like they're doing with the illegals today. Mm -hmm. so, so she's making an argument for people who aren't Irish. Irish people aren't complaining because right. they, because they got broken off. <laughs> she's going to make a case for Irish people, white people, and not her own. But you know what? She don't know any better. She don't. And y folks, when I put this up fully entrenched at the bottom, I know y'all didn't think I was going this way. I respect Candace Owens because I know her eyes are open now. The Bible says in times past, the most I've winked at our ignorance, but now command everyone everywhere to repent. And regardless of her, her ignorant answers at that time, I can respect her intelligence. And I know the most high is moving something in her spirit. And therefore, I'm not going to hold her ignorance against her. I want to see how far the most high take her with her, with her digging in to the enemy's conspiracies against us throughout history. She's the right one for it. Okay. So she truly believed this when the guy asked her the question or he would have served it up. But I believe Candace is going into a different direction. And I'm not going to judge her past missteps under ignorance being programmed against us if, if she utilized her talents for the right reasons going forward. Right? Do this. It's not clear to me why. Oh, no. Let's get him out of here. Let's go to Candace. That, that, there's no kind of, there's no reparations, no restitution, nothing. But... Should the Irish get reparations? And listen. The white guy says, listen, there's no reparations and no and, and no uh, restitutions. So he's actually serving this up, elder lawyer, saying, you know that the, these people, the descendants of slaves, the black Judites here have been done wrong. And that because their <laughs> forefathers weren't paid and weren't put over unions when they started transitioning into the industrial age, being the, the working class, that the children of Judah still suffers financially. White people know this. They know this. But yet, she comes with an ignorant answer. She, she comes with an answer for the Irish people. Is it fair that, that there's no kind of, there's no reparations, no restitution, nothing? Should the Irish get reparations, by the way? Irish need not, need not apply signs when they came here during the progressive era? I mean, how far do we want to take this down? Are we, do, are we acknowledging that there are ugly spots in history? Because 60% of the world would be entitled to slave reparations if you want. Okay. If 60% of the world would be entitled to it, let's start then. Oh, don't tell me it can't start. When between four years, billions of dollars were sent to the Ukrainians from the United States tax coffers. The treasury. I have nothing to do with the Ukrainians, but yet we work in here and we're paying them. And I don't hear her saying anything about that. 
Israel is a foreign country mm -hmm. that, that's still getting billions upon billions of dollars of packages sent to Israel as a foreign entity. But what's up with that? But when it comes to somebody who looked like you, why do you believe that that will break the system? Why? Because you believe they deserve it more subconsciously. And I know our mm -hmm. people don't want to admit that. In our mind, we really believe every other people deserve everything above us because we have no idea what we lost as a people. We have no idea mm -hmm. who we are. Therefore, if you're torture nothing, you'll believe that's all you deserve. Right. Subconsciously, this woman right here and all her intelligence, beautiful woman, believes that the others are better. And she's too proud to say it. And that's the programming through the spirit of God we are seeking to break. That type of mentality in our people. Because they don't even know they think this way. That they have just, just vitriol against what they see in the mirror. And it pans out politically before the world when, when one has an opportunity to stand for who looks like them. Yes, yeah, she's coming around. Hey, hey, listen, this was years ago. So I'm going to give it a pass because this was years ago when he served it up. But I'll tell you this, he knew exactly what the answer would be so that now the white man isn't the issue, folks. What they, You know why they put these people in front of us? To say, we're not, we're not your issue. That's why Esau put these people up and say, listen, it's your people who, when they get in positions of influence, speaks against you. When they get behind closed doors politically, they vote against you. And not only, and guess what? They, they, it's calculating how they use other people who don't have the same experience being from this country. So, the, so, so it's, 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 it's really a weird dichotomy for them. Because yes, they look like us, but they don't share the experience not being from chattel slavery here in America. So really what she was supposed to say is what the brother said. I can't speak on that being from the Caribbean. I can't say what my brothers and sisters don't deserve here because I have a different experience and we need to be talking about what they're gonna do for our people over in Jamaica. That would have, been, would have been the intelligent thing for her to say. But, but Esau is putting these people up to say, I'm going to show you the people that you skid, the, the, you grease the skids for. When they come in, they're going to undermine you. to play that game well here's a fact slavery ended 154 years ago it's been a long long time since we had slavery in this country uh you have people like my family i'm he's from where black but my family came to the united states in 1962 my parents are from costa rica do i my family is from costa rica our elder lawyer are we seeing a pattern here mm -hmm. when it comes to the public voices that speaks for us yes sir can I go to Costa Rica and tell the Costa Ricans what they can't get? Right. What they don't deserve, <laughs> what they shouldn't get. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, Malcolm warned us about these a long time ago. Like, listen, if you're going to be from somewhere else, you got to get 10 toes down for us first and that's one thing people can say what they want to say about Farrakhan about that thing that happened and how that friction happened that, that infighting against nation of Islam let me tell you when Farrakhan came to the America mm -hmm. 
His voice stood for our people here first. That's right. Because he understood that what we went through and he's well versed, well studied to allow him to be in that position of power. Mm -hmm. Even Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey didn't become what he became from the Caribbean. It's when he came to the United States that he became the man. And he stood 10 toes down against an injustice. Uh, yeah. This guy from Costa Rica telling us what we shouldn't get. If you wanted to play that game. Well, here's a fact. Slavery ended 154 years ago. It's been a long, long time since we had slavery in this country. Uh, you have people like my family. I'm black, but my family came to the United States in 1962. My parents are from Costa Rica. Do I get a check? Uh, no. You stand 10 toes down and fight like we did to give you an opportunity to be here telling us what we don't deserve. And see, what is this? What, what word quantifies this, Elder Lawyer? You know what it is? What's that? Unappreciative and dishonorable. Those two words jump out at me. Unappreciative. Because you got the position based on the struggles our people did to allow you and your, your parents to come here in the 60s. Only to go to a university that, that, that's allowed through our struggle to open it up where we could go to other schools outside of black schools. Only to become educated to tell us what, what Judah don't, doesn't deserve. The nerve mm -hmm. of these people. And I'm glad we need to point these people out. This is what keeps us continually entrenched at the bottom. Because right. if these guys were out of the way, then the enemy would have to say it out of his mouth. And then guess what? We can have the conversation against the enemy instead of them using their sock puppets. So now, now Esau can say, listen, hey, we put it on the table, and it was people like you who knocked it down. <laughs> hey, we put it out there for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. A few more. Hit that like button. Y'all doing a great job. Great job, folks. Great conversation tonight. Next. I did a couple of essay contests that I actually won. And I won like NAACP at Soul Award for this essay and something else, I can't remember. Nigerian came to America, got serious minority grants to study overseas off of the backs of our people. Nigeria now. A check. I. Oh yeah. By the way, Candace Owens is Caribbean. A couple of essay contests that I actually won, and I won like NAACP at Soul Award for this essay, and something else. I can't remember another. Like I ended up winning money, and the essay was. Um, Do you think black people should have repar should get repar reparations? And I was like, no, you didn't work for it. Why hold on, you? hold on, hold on, listen. And Elder Lawyer, she said this with her chest. Yeah. From <laughs> Nigeria, Elder Lawyer, she said this Check. with her I chest. did a couple of essay contests that wow. I actually won. And I won like NAACP at Soul Award for this essay and something else. I can't remember another, like I ended up winning money. And the essay was, um, do you think black people should, have repar should get reparations? It was white people who posed the question. Reparations. And I was like, no, you didn't work for it. No, you didn't work for it. Nigeria. 
there's a common thread here that I believe that we've been ignoring for many years. Boy, I wish I could get Gaja on. Somebody call Gaja and tell him to come on here, please. I need some representation. I need, I, hey, some of my, some of my Simeon brothers, come on up. What? Simeon, Haitian, Levi, come on up. Because I believe, you know what? Have Judah been this naive? Folks, they've been running this same game for decades. Putting people in front with, with the loudest voice that, that, that received opportunity based on Judah only to have them what? Turn their, their backs to us. You want to know why Israel is fully entrenched at the bottom? Next. Why are you so against reparations? Valerie, it's a matter of a waste of time. We've got so much to do. This brother is from Panama. You will see him on most conservative channels. Zebulon, a Panamanian, folks. <laughs> now, is there a, a quiet resentment against Judah that, that we don't know about? And if so, shouldn't we have that conversation? Do some of these people come over to America with some quiet resentment against our people? They're going to really have a problem with this broadcast tonight, lawyer, because let me tell you, because what we're doing is we're actually bringing up the silent conversations that, that everyone know exists but aren't willing to talk openly about this, about these issues that keeps us stagnant. No one thought that we would begin to look at these people and say, you know what, where are they from? And what, what makes them credible to speak for us when we've done so much for all of the tribes in the earth when it comes to sacrifice? are you so against reparations? Valerie, it's a matter of a waste of time. We've got so much to do. And yet you have people who invest so much energy and attention on what I consider to be a dead end idea, a dead end movement. It's a waste of time. Our brother Zebulon from Panama. Okay, now we have someone from the soft side again. Let's see where he's from and what he has to say about it. If we were to pay reparations today, we would only divide the country further. We would. My brother Ephraim, Malik Bataino, a brother from Puerto Rico, Puerto in the United States, telling us what. And look like he from the soft side. Okay. Now, I, listen, I'm not making no division. By making groups and calling them their own group, politically, they have divided them from us. Okay. And someone else from, from Puerto Rico also belongs to the soft side of things. Has this to say with his chest. You don't have anything to do with this conversation. Hold on, let's go back. Boundaries. You don't have anything to do. Oh, oh, oh let me go back. Panamania. Now, so. Hold on. And it's catching on too because now people. No, let me go back. Overwhelmness. It apparent. Hold on, let me go back. You have people who invest so much energy and attention on what I consider to be a dead-end idea, a dead-end movement. 
If we were to pay reparations today, we would only divide the country further. We would only divide the country further from Puerto Rico. <laughs> we would only, hold up, and billions upon billions of dollars were just given to illegals. And none of these people who are up against reparations have anything to say negative about it. Is right. there a silent hate against Judah unspoken? Okay. And they, they love getting some of these guys who have been totally controlled by, by white men. Okay. By totally Control, I'm going to tell you, folks, a lot of these guys have been broken by white men. Literally. A dead end movie. If we were to pay reparations today, we would only divide the country further. We would insult many black Americans. We would insult many black Americans. Look who's speaking for us, brothers and sisters. Now, when it comes politically, when it comes to uh, uh, politically or public, here's a representation for, for the Judite man right here. Here he is. You, you, you want to know who's representing the Judite man? He don't represent us, all right? I'm gonna show y'all something here. And don't think this is a coincidence either. Don't think this is a coincidence either. This brother I said earlier, Elder Lawyer, Danielle mm -hmm. Kaluuya, he's from Africa. He was asked about reparations and stuff. And he said, well, listen, I don't think I'm qualified to speak in America on, on, on black political issues. You know, they'll never put a mic in front of him no more. He's not going to undermine us, but they, they tried to do with him what they did with these other, you know, uh, these other usurpers. Mm. He says, I can't do that. I can't speak politically. Because he says, these black, black Americans, I've studied them. They gave me the opportunity to become an actor. Okay, I, I could never disrespect politically what they've gone through here. But notice that when it comes to the future of, when it comes to influence and masculinity, they're no longer, they're no longer using black men within the country to become what they would call stars. Mm -hmm. They go into the outside of the country because they understand the influence that comes with media in Hollywood. And they understand the political voice that resonates through the world differently. Not to say that others doesn't have a strong voice politically, but Judah have been known for stirring the pot. Whether we're a basketball player, whether we're a football player, whether we're an actor, we understand the struggle and what it took for us to actually get anything out of a system that a, where the deck has been stacked against us. So instead of represent, strong representation like this, like it used to be with Denzel, Wesley Snipes, and others, here's, here's a representation for Judah, for Judah now. And it goes back to what I was talking about, putting everything that they know God says is wrong in a party associated with Judah. This is the only organic representation we can get and as a black man in America right now and, be re and, and have any level of success and or notoriety. They will not incentivize a strong 
Judite in this time. You know why? Because they know we're living in the time of the awakening. There's not a strong black man alive in America who, who doesn't know or haven't even or di didn't at least think that there's a connection between us and those people who receive the law in that Bible. This is intentional. Elder Lawyer, let's go here real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Isaiah 3, because this, this is all they have for us right now. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him, and he yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Now, Elder Lawyer, go to Isaiah, the third chapter, real quick. Isaiah 3. And let's read the 12th verse. As for my people. Yes, now, we're, we're the people who receive the law. The Bible says that we were meant to be the head, not the tail. How did we fall to such a pass? And why can't we, why are we fully entrenched at the bottom? And guess what? Why are our own people working to keep us at the bottom? Thank you, Elder Dell. Isaiah 3 and 12, let's read that. Yes, sir. As for my people... Children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. Folks, they are intentionally silencing the strong black voice, especially the black man. So that now society, our society in particular, would run, would be ran through the spirit of chaos and confusion. Children are their oppressors. Read. And women rule over them. And this is how you know it's talking about our people. There's no other race of people that can say that they are operating under this particular curse. Where women represents their nation. When, wit, when the Bible tells us it, in a woman's glory and all of her power, she is still the weaker vessel in comparison to a man. It's not saying what a woman can or cannot do. A woman can achieve all types of heights and accomplishments through accomplishments, but she can never be a man. And that's why the Bible says what? Give honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Understand her shortcomings because she wasn't made to rule. She was made to help meet the ruler. And she'll always, in the earth, it doesn't matter what the world say, she'll always operate at a deficit when it comes to what? Being in power. And now they're going to try to roll out some East Indian who would, who would never have a position of rulership over her own people in India. And throwing her in a pot with Judah. And shaming Judah for not supporting it anymore. For not being undermined anymore. For not getting disrespected going forward. And women rule over them. Read. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. Read that again. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. People who has influence in position of power are causing our people to err. You know why? Because they know what the conversation should be to heal all wounds. At least fiscally, the example is right now current with the immigrants 
Ukraine and Israel within the last three to four years. Billions upon billions of dollars being given to these people who are not us and didn't build this country. But yet they'll get on TV and, and, and whistle past the graveyard and ignore the obvious. That, that this system was set up to keep Judah at a permanent working class or at the very least impoverished. Begging. Like a crumb, asking the master to flick a crumb off the table. That's, I'm going to tell you folks, politically, that's what the construct was set up for. They're talking about a threat to democracy. Their democracy is what? Perpetual, perpetual impoverished conditions for the tribe of, Is the tribe of Israel and especially for the tribe of Judah. That's what democracy is to them. He's a threat to democracy. What, 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 what democracy? The democracy to have a system in place that targets our children? That keeps us at, 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 as, as a minority between 13 and 15 percent to give our women the right to kill their own children. What if they did? Elder Lawyer, what if they decided to do what's right and gave our people reparation? Reparations. Would it actually right. would it actually break the system? Like they say, like like they claim it would. Mm. And you know what th that answer is, Elder Lawyer? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they don't want to say. They don't want to say why. Why? They can give it to the Ukrainians. They can give it to uh, other white people. They can give it to uh, Jewish people in Israel. No matter what country they come from, even if they were the corporation and had family that have enslaved us. But what would happen if they give the people who are purposely entrenched on the bottom the reparations? You know what would happen? And they know it. We would take the money and rise above all people like we did leave in Egypt. Don't, right. hey, you're gonna have a few, you're gonna have a few that's gonna spend it on whatever, but the majority of our people are gonna use this as seed and money to make sure they'll never look back and understand what poverty is. And what? Esau have all, has always measured his power by how low he could bring Judah. This is why every four years they try to check the temperature politically on where we stand because they actually measure their power by how low the tribe of Judah sustains at the bottom. Why? Because Judah is not just trying to get along, go along to get along. Judah is a lion. And Judah understand that it doesn't stop with this money here. It starts with incentivizing our people against the enemies they're using to press against us. They understand when we get it that we're going to help all of our people. We're going to go to Africa with the money and set and set Africa. Even the people who spoke against us with these, these little parrots they have running around, these sock puppets, puppets, we'll go to Nigeria and help build them. We would go to Panama and say, brother, hey, sisters, doesn't matter. We're going to show you how to get what we got. And they know that's how Judah roll. Mm -hmm. We don't roll and just, let me tell you, folks, not once when I went around the country that I, that, or the world that I celebrate me being from America. I didn't have to do that because I, I'm Israel first. Okay, I don't care what other people think and what's on my passport. I'm Israel first and no, in no way will I go someplace and undermine the struggle of my own people. Can't do it. Knowing what, 
knowing the suffering we've always suffered and the fact that we're being targeted by all races right now. Mm -hmm. I led by what? When I went to other countries, I led by my talents, by my gifts. If anyone knew anything about me, it was it's what I could actually produce and help others with. That's what that's what I was known for going anywhere, not for being an American. And these people come over here and they'll wear on their sleeve their homeland. I'm from this island or that island or this island. And they'll use that to snub their nose at the brothers and sisters who have struggled here and gave them opportunity to have a public bullhorn to speak freely in this country like you couldn't where you came from. But you know what? We're going to continue to wake up our people. This is why, even though they know it's right, that they should give it to us. This is why they feel they can. Elder Lawyer, if you will, let's go to, let's go to Romans 11 chapter. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? <laughs> Amya says, I'm tired of this evil world. And you know what? Hey, that's good. That's good. The most high is tired of it. Mm -hmm. That's good. The Bible says we can be angry, but sin not. Use that spirit constructively to wake up the people and usher in our king. That's right. Use it constructively. Okay. The more they come come against us, the more truth I'll teach. Because that's how you, let me tell you, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's how you take down a, a society. It's through ideas. You take down evil through truth because, because they are concealed in darkness and rule through lies. See? But if you shine truth on them, then they got to scurry in a corner like a light come on in a room filled, filled with roaches because they can only operate in the dark. But but light, they guess what? They have, there's no place for, dark, uh, for darkness where there's light. So they'll just go somewhere else and find the ignorant to control and or to destroy because the light see them coming a million miles away. Elder Lawyer, a Roman 11 real quick. Let's hit him. All right, from the top? Yes, sir. All right, Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. So even Paul asked, did the Most High cast away Israel and, get, and got a new people called Gentiles? The answer is no. We, we were always God's people. We'll, we will always be God's people. The question is, when are we going to start figuring this out and begin to operate like it? There's no way if Esau or anyone put a, I don't care where you're from, put a microphone in my, in my face. Will I speak to undermine the struggle of my own brother or sister? And it doesn't matter where they're from, because I know the curses have affected all of us throughout the earth. And when I was in, when I was in the UK, elder lawyer, let me tell you, and they'll tell you, I stood 10 toes down for my Benjamite brothers and sisters there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Even when a Benjamite Muslim try to come on the broadcast to debate, the debate us and guess he got totally picked apart. And I think, guess what? I think it was an eye-opening uh, uh, broadcast for that, for that uh, Benjamite Muslim that was there. Because what? Muslims, he was getting so taught, let me put it that way, <laughs> during, that, during that broadcast on Peace FM, that East Indians with cabs parked their car 
and knocked on Peace FM's door and came into the broadcast. And you know what they said? Between the break before they came on, and God you will tell you, they said, this man you're talking to doesn't represent Islam. Mm. Disrespected that man publicly, saying, you can't speak for us as a Muslim, being a black man who was actually coming against us. And we were exposing what the fact that Islam is a slave religion and you, brother, you shouldn't be debating us. You should be on a side with us. One second, sir. I'll be right back. Okay. That you should be on our side. The only reason those Arabs would, would come in and convert you is to what? Get a place to undermine you and your community eventually, politically. You'll go, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Now they're moving into your neighborhoods and impregnating your children. Under black and brown, now they're taking all the money. Don't forget, it was the Benjamites who built England. The Arabs going to come in now and get all the finances that should be allocated for our Benjamites. And they, they can only do it under the guise of Islam. That was what? That was the back door they used to undermine our Benjamite brothers in England. And I looked at him. Y'all should have seen this broadcast, brothers and sisters. It was a shame. They came and looked at him like, like he was a speck of dirt and said, listen, this black guy, he ain't doing a good job here. He doesn't represent our Islam. He don't know anything about Muhammad. After this brother sat there and argued two hours upholding Islam. And I, and I looked at the brother, I'm like, now you see, they're not for you. They'll use Islam to get next to you. They'll use Islam to get an opportunity to watch you and undermine you and take what belongs to you. Mm-hmm. But they can't do that if you uphold your Bible and become who you always were, an Israelite. I can pick Islam apart, every part of it. Muslim, Arabs can't even uphold that religion because without us, there would be no Islam. We taught your prophet. Huh? And you know, when I was on the radio show, folks, I came with the books. I can tell you what Islam was before it was called Islam. It was Persian mythology. And I know you worship more gods than Allah. You have many gods y'all worship over there. Okay? It's nothing different, folks, than an Arabic Catholic religion. Same thing. So when you know you're Israel and got their history, listen, you can't come to me with a religion that I can actually give you the date on when it began. What are you talking about? Christ was already on the scene. Christ came, died, resurrected on the throne. The Old Testament was already intact. What can you bring me now? I got the Old and New Testament. You gonna come with a book later? Are you kidding me? Y'all needed that to unite Arabs. We were fine without that. <laughs> Don't come to me with some Johnny come lately religion and try to tell me how it's above the book that preceded Islam. Huh? The Torah, the Tanakh, and the New Testament was before the Quran. So I'm like, listen, y'all got the right one today. today. I'm going to teach you what your daddy didn't teach you about Islam. What you want? So uh, the, the Arabs, they end up scurrying out there too. Because I thought they was going to come with some, you know, with some real loaded guns, and some history and all that. Some loaded history that they, they, they was going to give me the business. I'm like, okay. They told the brother, you get out of here because you really don't represent us. 
And I'm like, well, okay, you're going to disrespect a brother like that who's, who's standing 10 toes down for, for your people? It was like, no, nah, he don't know anything. And I looked at him, the brother. I'm like, so this is what you want? The religion you upholding, the people who taught you the religion don't respect you. They said, get out of, get out of here so that they can, t I'm like, I'm like, listen, brother, you stay silent. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll dust these, these Arabs off real quick. You just be quiet, brother. It's good. They're going to represent it. And let's see what's happening with this, within, the next, within the next hour or so with them. Even though my brother came to fight against me with Islam, I still defended him as an Israelite. And that's what it's really about. I remember when, the, when those clowns, um, the, the apologetics, after that James White debate, or before that and all that, how those clowns over there, they initially wanted me to speak and say something negative about another group. Hey, yeah, what do you think about the uh, uh, IUIC? And I'm like, listen, what I think about them are our business. Okay, I'm not getting on any of your broadcasts, speaking ill or down on my brothers. Even if we don't see eye to eye, I'm not going to allow you to do that. You don't deserve that. You are beneath hearing anything that comes comes up between me and my brothers. Now, if you want to talk about doctrine or whatever the case is, I'm open for that. But you would never have me go on a white program with some satanic Jesuit apologetics and say something negative against any group out there that are stomping for our people. I'm like, if you want to talk to me, talk to me. I'm here. They can't. Esau love it when they serve it up and you knock your brothers down. And that's what these other brothers and sisters been coming to America. They've been doing for years. Okay. If someone want to ask me a question about doctrine and call me, I'll talk about doctrine. But I'll never publicly get, get on one of Esau's programs. Hey, man, what do you think about those guys in the purple? Hey, they do it. They do. Hey, listen. Why don't you get one of them and ask them about that? I, I don't know nothing about that. They believe they're Israel. They're doing the best they can in trying to wake up our people. And that part of it should be commended. Okay? A matter of fact, you wouldn't have to complain about some people waking up people if your people would have told our people the truth. So don't get your panties in a bunch now and try to get us in fighting against one another. Okay, if you would have told us the truth, you wouldn't have to worry about any groups out here saying what they're saying. Tell the truth. Same playbook over and over again, divide and conquer. I'm not going for it. Because why? If it's truth, guess what, folks? There's enough room for everybody who want to speak it. There's enough room for everybody to speak truth. That's what I'm about. Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. You back? Yes, sir. I'm here. All right. Have God cast away his people? Read. God forbid. No. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. God have not cast away his people, which he knew. See, they try to lie and claim we're done away with. But let me show you why they won't give us reparations, folks. Let's go down to the 11th verse, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir, verse 11. I say then, 
Have they stumbled that they should fall? Have have they stumbled that they should fall? Read. God forbid. No. Read. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Through, For, through Israel's fall, salvation came to the Gentiles to do what? Or to provoke them to jealousy. To provoke Israelites to jealousy. Now, what would the Gentiles, what would the Gentiles acquire that could make Israel jealous? Twelve. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. Be the what? Be the riches of the world. The fall of Israel be the riches of the world. So they, they measure their riches by how low they can keep the children of Israel. If the fall of Israel made the whole world rich, read. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles. As we are diminished, the Gentiles flourish financially. Now, um, all, listen, all pastors everywhere looking at this New Testament should be able to see this and understand the geopolitical, the geopolitical uh, uh, importance of this. This is where theology and politics come together. See, so preachers should look at this and say, man, that's deep. Each week I'm praying over these people. They come in, please pass the prayer over me. My rent is due. I'm about to get put out systematically from one pastor to the next. They die and pass, pass the, the, the church to their son. And their son is still dealing with the same issues from generation to generation. Our people complaining about our condition. And now it's through the Bible. We can begin to understand it. That there's a systematic, there's a system in place that has us permanently entrenched at the bottom and it's intentional. The, if the fall of Israel made all the other nations rich, read. I, it says here, now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? How much more their fullness, folks? They are systematically keeping us on the bottom to measure their power by. And this is why, even though they'll talk about it, they'll lie and claim, oh yeah, we'll study some reparations. They, they'll say, yeah, we'll study reparations. A matter of fact, first day, <laughs> if it comes on my desk, if the bill come on my desk, I'll sign it. If it gets to your desk. Well, Kamala, you and Joe Biden is in position right now. You don't have to wait for it to get to your desk. Do an executive order. You did it for Ukraine. You did it for COVID. You did it for the state of Israel. Do an executive order. And say the same executive order that came from Pharaoh of Egypt to let God's people go. I'm given reparations to give them an opportunity to financially grandize themselves with an opportunity based on the work of their forefathers that have allowed me to be here running for, for president. It sounds like a simple process to me. Elder Lawyer, it's deep. Yes, sir. Because I've been looking at this thing. And see, people don't know, folks. The Bible is all about politics. Every empire, it was prophesied our people would actually uh, uh, be ruled by from one generation to the next. Th that was all politics. A Republican, Elder Lawyer, presented an opportunity for the bill of reparations in California for descendants of slaves strictly from America. A Republican, a white man presented the bill. 
And guess who shot it down? Gavin Newsom, a Democrat. Using a black flunky. But it was Gavin Newsom. So the Democrats, folks, were a party that was set to keep the status quo to make sure the children of Israel stay at the bottom. They're the taskmasters of ancient Egypt. Because keeping us in control gives them a job. Without us being impoverished at the bottom, those losers would be fired. There'll be no need for them if they can't keep us under some level of control or and or impoverished. And how do they do it? They must sell sin to the children of Israel so that the Most High can stay angry at us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Reproductive rights. Oh, yeah. Your son. Yeah, let me chop off his reproductive organ. Oh, yeah, your daughters. Oh, don't, don't worry about it. We can just take some skin and meat off your arm and give you a reproductive organ. Aren't you glad that we have the, the Black, Brown, and LBGT alliance? Knowing that in the Bible, these were the activities or actions in the Old Testament that led to our fall. Huh? How did we get here? Where they've aligned us with a bunch of crazies and no one has pushed back. Fully entrenched at the bottom. How do we get out of this? How do we get out of this? Aren't you tired of being lied to? I, I, I'll wait the first day. If it come on my desk, first day. I, if it come on my desk. After Al Sharpton. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this was 2019. Oh yeah, Kamala, Kamala Harris. Uh, if, if 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 reparations come, uh, if they put reparations on your desk, Kamala, what, what would you, what you what will you do? What will you do, Kamala? If they put it on your desk. That's what old Reverend Al Sharp Al Sharpcut said in 2019. Oh yeah, well if it if the bill is passed on my desk, I'm gonna sign it. 2019. First day outside it. First day. You've been in position for almost four years. Sign it now. And you know why they won't sign it? Because that's not their position as Democrats. Their position is to always work to keep us at the bottom. During the industrial age, when it's time, when, when things started booming and cars and all that, what do they do? They open up the borders for Irishmen, Italians, and Jews from over Europe to get all of those positions that we were qualified to handle. See, same thing. Every time we begin to crawl out of this little trench where we've been placed in, they're sitting back and saying, okay, I see the margins financially are, are getting raised for black people. Even years ago, the demo nuts was sitting there looking at uh, Elder Lawyer, how the economy was going under Trump and how, how many black men and black women became entrepreneurs and actually began to make money beyond the poverty line. Okay, so how are we going to sell this and beat this economy? in an election season. Oh, the world magically caught a cold. And if everything shut down, now we can look at all these jobs that was lost and how bad it was so that we can have something to run on. Because what? 
Our people were making advancements beyond the poverty line and they couldn't have that because if we begin to make more money, then we can have more children and now we don't have to make a choice not to get, to get rid of our children. Why? Because we'll be able to afford them, which is contrary to what they're trying to do against us. With money, we can afford to have children. So the abortion rate will go down. Huh? Let's talk. The world caught a cold. And no soon as they opened up, it was right on time during the election with mail-in ballots for, guess what? It was less than 50,000 votes Biden won the election with. Mail-in ballots, anyone? And then after that, no soon as Biden was sworn in, anti-Asian hate crime, and they started flooding the United States with immigrants next to us. Because we were moving too far up on the financial ladder under Trump, folks. They're like, no, we got four years of just ripping this whole thing apart <laughs> based on how great things were. And black people, Judah in general, was rising out of poverty. Huh? Let's talk. The Bible says through our fall, they all get rich. So anytime we rise economically, it scares them. Because why? It's out of their control. They fear what we'll do when it comes to the money. And I'm not talking about anything mm -hmm. wrong. Right. They fear us doing what's right with the money. And now, if you're not impoverished, you're not making sinful choices to survive. Mm -hmm. That's right. See? If you got money, now you're not worried and getting some, you're not out getting out alcohol and drugs to cover, to cover your current state. You're operating with a sound mind and you have something to leave your children who can now do what? Rival the enemy that's at the door financially against you. They can't, they can't have that. Five, 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 one, five, six, zero, five, nine, three, two, seven. Elder Lawyer, what say you? And I'm going to pull up the phones. Let's go. Fully entrenched at the bottom. What are we going to do? Are we going to continue to believe the lies? I'll be right back. And then we'll go to the calls. Yes, sir. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church, out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book and the truth will make you Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Thank you, brothers and sisters. And yes, week six, Elder, of the Hebrew and Bible Academy is coming up. Well, we're, we're halfway through, correct? Yes, sir, we are. And we're going into Islam Exposed. Uh-huh. Islam Exposed this coming Sunday. You don't want to miss it. 
Week seven, we're going to have another conversation where I'm going to have many people on through Zoom, and we're going to talk about the, the issues between man and woman and whether or not we're willing to be, become accountable to our part in partaking in, in the partaking of the fruit of good and evil. Are we willing to give a self accountability on how we're here with families fully separated? Okay. Week seven of our Hebrew and Bible Academy. We're going to talk about this round table discussion. All right. But this week, Islam exposed. If, if you wish to be a part of this, go to historytimes.org to enroll and we'll make sure you get all the past lessons and you'll be in for our one-on-ones that we're going to have in this. And we do have a lot of gifts to send for the second part. So be a part of it. Historytimes.org. Also, I wanted to talk about that if you sent cash out for the last couple of days, there was a reoccurring issue because I think when a lot of information was put out there, others are trying, East Indians and these other people, probably up from other countries, scammers, are trying to send us uh, uh, cash apps to pay them, using other people's pictures and all that. So we had to straighten all that out. Everything is fine now. You know, there's no hack or anything, but if you do sin, everything is fine now because we straighten things out in the back, all right? You have scammers in America, probably from overseas, seeking to scam, right? Using other people's pictures and all that by saying, pay, pay, give me this pay. No, okay? So if something happened where you paid a couple of days ago and it was rejected, you can resend it now that everything has been straightened out, okay? All right. So let's talk about it, Elder Lawyer. HistoryTimes.org. Let's what what say you fully entrenched at the bottom before I open open up the lines. Yes, sir. Well, before I give my uh, my two cents, I just want to put something on the table in regards to this uh, this coming academy uh, or this upcoming week of the academy, based on what you were mentioning earlier about what occurred in the UK. Yeah. When the guys came up, the Pakistanis came and said that this black man was probably himself a devout Muslim, is not a representative of Islam. It cannot speak for Islam. Um, what do you think about touching on the racism and the prejudice within Islam? Let's do that. That's an angle we, need to, we never dealt with. The, the, the racism within the theology of Islam is there racism when, within the actual doctrine? Right. Let's do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> let's do it. Yes, sir. All right. Let's do it, young man. That sounds... We never tackled it from that aspect fully. Right. The racist doctrine, which really will... will, will it brings a light to, how, to what happened to our people in America who began to embrace it. Mm -hmm. Right? Have we become better in our community since Islam blew up within the black community or worse? Mm. See? So, oh yeah, great, great, great angle. We'll do that, all right? All right, what say you other lawyer before I open up the lines? Yes, sir, I just wanna put a few things on the table in regards to this conversation. Um, usually, um, and this is coming from both sides of the spectrum, mm -hmm. those who are pro reparations and those who are anti-reparations who at every turn try to undermine what's actually deserved for those who served in this country, built this country, built the infrastructure, and never were actually given their just due, were never comp and, and were never compensated for their work. Um, for those dealing first on the side of those who are anti, those who try to undermine, um, for example, you may have those within that crowd that may profess to be Christians, especially amongst the Black Caucus. Also, some of our brothers and sisters from the diaspora from other countries may claim to believe the Bible, to hold biblical principles and viewpoints or what have you. Um, for them to be anti-reparations, I'm going to show that to be so is actually anti-Bible. It's anti-Scripture. Okay. On the other side, for those who are pro 
and four, a lot of times, and I get it, I understand it totally. We're dealing with a political conversation and sometimes you don't want to conflate or convolute a political conversation with too many different things because the message gets crossed and before you know it, we don't know what we're asking for because there's so many different things flying at once. However, it is sometimes a little disheartening from that viewpoint where, or people who are from the pro angle, sometimes put the Bible on the back burner as if the Bible is anti-reparations, as if the Bible is anti-justice. And I wanna show that, no, the Bible actually speaks to if a people have been harmed, if atrocities have been done to a people, if precedents have been set for what happens or what a people should receive if atrocities have been done to them, then that precedent should be followed across the board. Right? Yeah. So uh, just reading a few scriptures, and actually you can go ahead and, and uh, break some of these down. Uh, this is First Timothy 5 and 21. Okay, let's get it. First Timothy five and twenty one. I have it here. All right. First Timothy five and twenty one. It says here, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, so Yeshua Mashiach, and the elect angels, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. So what does this have to do with this topic or this conversation of reparations? Well, first and foremost, we have to understand what partiality is. Partiality is setting a precedent or doing something for one person or one group of people, and that precedent that you set for whatever reason doesn't apply to another set of people or another group of people. So we're talking about precedents. The precedents have already been set for what happens when a nation has been hurt, when pain is when uh, pain has been um, uh, done to a particular nation, or atrocities have been committed against a nation. What that people should be should receive in order to be compensated, in order to be restored, in order to be repaired. We have examples. You got the Jewish people in the Holocaust. You got the Japanese people in the internment camps, and you have many other examples of what happens to a people when they have gone through atrocities, and those people need to be either compensated or restored or repaired for what has been done to them. So the Bible says, do nothing by partiality. If you're going to set the precedent for these other people, you can't in the same vein turn around when black people are asking for the same compensation the same restoration, the same reparations that other people have received, you turn around and tell them to stop begging. You turn <laughs> around and tell them that they must pull themselves up by their bootstraps. That's against the Bible. Exactly. So for those who are trying to claim that the Bible shouldn't be in this conversation, the Bible helps your argument against Christians who are coming out saying that we shouldn't get it. Exactly. Because now the Bible says do nothing in partiality. So why do you why you didn't say this when Jewish people were getting money then, Christian? You got you got a problem with Jews getting money for the atrocities done against them? Right. Exactly. So you can't say something happened a hundred and something years ago when that corporation is still in place and the children that have been that were and the children children's foreparents the children are still here from the four parents who work for nothing. So the company mm -hmm. is still in place. And guess what? The slave impoverished uh, 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 position has been handed down to their children. So the Bible says exactly. do nothing by partiality. So if, you, if it's good for the Jewish people, it's good for us. If it's good for uh, other people, asylum seekers and all that, listen, we've been strangers since 70 AD, wanderers in the earth. There's no 
<laughs> Let me tell you, there's no greater asylum seekers than the children of Israel. Exactly. Okay, so don't come to me with this asylum seeker thing when the Bible tell you that we, we've been wanderers in the earth ever since we lost Zion. So you, you can take that asylum seeker money and close the borders and give it to the people who built the country. And the Bible backs this understanding of how to deal, deal with, with people justly. Mm -hmm. What you have next, Elder Lawyer? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 117. Deuteronomy 117. Let's get it. All right. Again, I'll read it. You can break it down. The Bible, the Bible backs justice and reparations is justice. Deuteronomy 1 and 17. Read it, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. Read it again. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. If it was good for Jewish people, you need to have a Nuremberg trial for the descendants of slaves here in America, period. And, mm -hmm. and have our people decide how it will be distributed. We have enough intelligence amongst our people that can let you know Based on interest, what's owed? Period. So there's no c confuse in the matter. Well, who's going to get it? Well, well I'm from, I, I, not, nah, we'll decide who gets it. If you're, if you're from, if, you, if, if you, you're from the enslaved people who were born in America, who were living in America doing slavery, and you're those children, you get the money. Right. Period. Look at what happened. You did it for the North American Indians with the reservations and the five dollar Indians who came over here and state claimed this is a lot of this gave casinos and everything else. The Bible says you shall not respect persons in judgment. How is it good for everyone else except Judah? Mm -hmm. Read on. But you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of the man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause is too hard for you. Bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And it says, be not afraid of the face of man. Oh, man, if y'all y'all give this money, you're going to break the... Listen, the most I say, don't care what someone will think or how they fix their face up. Oh, because you're not getting it. It's an issue. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, don't be afraid of a man. Judge righteous judgment, even if people disagree with it. It ain't none of your business. What's next? Yes, sir. <laughs> Leviticus 19 and 13. Leviticus 19 and 13. Let's read it. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night, until the morning. You and guess what? The wages that were taken from our people are still in the hand of the families and the children of those families who are living today. They have exactly. stolen they have stolen wages still within the stock market that belongs to us. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The same family still exists. I don't care if they change their names or switch their plantation to a corporation. That money is still floating around in the earth and it belongs to those who worked. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. And I know Jewish people don't have any problem with this because they believe in Torah, don't they? Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. And y'all, guess what? You've had our wages, y'all stole our four parents' money many mornings without it, mm -hmm. without it, ill-gotten gains that have not been what? Given to its rightful owners. So you can use the Bible for reparations because the Bible is for justice. That's right. So That's if right. a... So if a pastor is against reparations, that pastor is anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-justice. And they're mm -hmm. saying, they're saying the, uh, uh, the plight of Jewish people and others are greater, is greater than ours. 
is greater than our plight. And, and that they, and they deserve, to, they deserve to be indemnified above our people. That's what you're saying. What's next, Elder Lawyer? Yes, sir. Last one, uh, James 5 and 4. James 5, verse 4. And I still need to know, could we go into other people's country and speak publicly, politically, against the interests of those people? Could I go into the Dominican Republic and tell Dominicans what they can't get? Or Haiti, what they can't get? <laughs> or Africa or not Nigeria and tell them, by the way, I'm running for election and I'm going to say publicly what y'all can't get. Are we allowed to do that? And if not, what makes them think, what give them the hubris to do that against us? Mm -hmm. James, what? Chapter five, verse number four. James five, verse four. And we're going to have an early night tonight because I want to, I, I want this to set on people without it being, you know, without it, us going too long. I really would like this to set in the minds of people so they can focus on where we are politically in the earth. And now with these scriptures and this conversation, we can call we we can call the evil system in, in, in its place to task. You can no longer hide behind your lies. You can no longer kick the can down the road claiming you truly care for us. We are exposing the whole system as hypocrites. Mm -hmm. James, what other lawyer? James 5 and 4. Let me get it here. James 5 verse 4. Read it. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. And they kept back everything that belonged to us by fraud. Read. Crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Seboeth. The Most High hears, hear, hear the cries of those from generation to generation that have been made impoverished where the other nations have financially emboldened themselves against the children of Israel. The Most High hear the prayers of our suffering. Mm -hmm. So the whole deal is, hey, the more you press upon us, the more destruction or curse will come upon your children. And that's the Bible. So when you hand over what you took through fraud to your children, the curse or the judgment falls off of you onto them. That's just how it is. So all, all this, man, I don't know how we're going to pay it. Uh, listen, you pay your taxes. The government gives out the money. Don't worry about it. Okay, so whatever you stole is in the United States treasury that's how it is so the bible says the hire of the laborers have reaped down your fields which is of you kept back by fraud cry it mm -hmm. and our people are suffering all that pull people up by the bootstraps and do this why you know they can't do this when you're pressing illegal immigrants on top of an already impoverished people. You know where this goes. They are systematically trying to utterly decimate our people in plain sight without saying anything. Folks, you're not going to urinate on us and tell us it's raining. We ain't going for it no more. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. They, we cry. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath, you thieves. We know why you, we even know why you got R. Kelly locked up. It have nothing to do with what R. Kelly did. He does nothing different than what you all do. 
in those circles. You don't want his children to have access to his catalog. Because you know when R. Kelly no longer exists, that catalog will be worth billions and his children will become billionaires. That's your issue. Your issue, because A, charge R. Kelly, but make sure all of his riches in his catalog go to his children. I bet you it doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's right. I bet you it doesn't. And no soon as an artist has peaked out, next thing you know, there's videos out slandering that person so that they can begin to pillage all that money so that there's nothing left for that man or woman's children. That's what it's about. So the generational wealth, wealth isn't passed down and it goes to the children of people who didn't work for it. That's fraud. You're making other people's children multi-billionaires off the backs of our people and no one is saying anything. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the fifth verse, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. I got one more if you don't mind after that. Go ahead. All right, James 5 and 5. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Read on. You've, con you've condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. And that's what's going on, folks. They've... They condemn and kill the righteous people. They know our people never recovered after they shut things down, which are so-called cold. Then open up the borders, incentivize uh, illegals in the cost of billions to fight, kill, and to destroy the tribe of Judah in these neighborhoods. They've incentivized a war to make it where our people would never get to the same status we were before the so-called virus. Last one, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. First Chronicles 9 and 7. First Chronicles 9 and 7. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Who goeth a warfare at any time at his own charges? Hold up. First Chronicles 9 and 7? Uh, 1 Corinthians, Salakia 9 oh, and 7. I was about to say, yeah. 1 Corinthians, all right. 9 and 7. Let's read it. Who goeth a warfare at any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Yeah, who builds a country and, 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 ch and their children don't benefit from it? Mm-hmm. I need y'all to think about that. We planted the vineyards. We built the plantations. Okay? We plowed the fields. We built Wall Street. Who built a great nation where their children cannot partake of its fruit? That's insane. Read. Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or say if not the law, the same also. The, the law says, says it also what? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. How can you muzzle the people who work to build the country and not give them food to nourish themselves so to continue working in the country? Mm-hmm. If you muzzle an ox, it's going to fall dead and no one benefits. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Do God take care for oxen? They care more about cattle than God's people. Mm -hmm. They don't muzzle their oxes when they're dealing with their farms. See? Because they know what? That same corn and nourishment that, that's in the field, that's feeding that ox, it's going to allow that ox to have enough power to pull more mm -hmm. and to grow more. Folks, they care more for animals than the children of Judah, than the children of Israel. Mm. 
imagine this, imagine an ox coming from another field, from another country, to come examine the ox that have plowed the field, have done all the hard heavy lifting, all the hard labor, and this ox from another country comes to this ox that did all the hard work and tells him, listen, you don't deserve no corn. Mm. Put the muzzle on him. Yeah, we did all the heavy lifting as the ox. And then an ox come from another country and say, no, all the work you did is for me. And y'all need to muzzle this ox who made all this, this bountiful fruit here mm. that now we can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just imagine that. So if anything, brothers and sisters, these guys who are reparations and all that, whether it be Tariq or whatever, they need to examine how the Bible backs their claim. And as long as they're anti-Bible, the conversation will always stay divided because the Bible actually gives them what? The moral high ground to do what our people did before leaving Egypt. <laughs> and th think about this, folks. You're not going to do it without some type of uh, belief system behind it. Mm. The Jews were able to get money through the Holocaust because they were able to do what? They would. It was able to stand as a religious group who believe in justice according to Torah. Mm -hmm. Great points, Elder. I, I got to put a round of applause up there. Very, very, very great work. Yes, 515-605-9327. And oh, the lawyer, I still wonder. I wonder if we could go over into other countries and tell other people in Jamaica, Haiti, and Africa what their people can't get. <laughs> and, and, right. and what would happen if we did that? Okay, so if you're from another country, give me some insight of what would happen if Blacks from America, Judah, after the struggles that happened to your country, came to your country and said, well, you shouldn't get anything. H how would y'all see that particular individual? 515-605-9327. Okay, and we do have, thank you, Elder Ramar. Let's go down, let's go down the line. Let's hear these calls. One second. 515-605-9327. What say you? And Gaja, if you're around, give me a call. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold and you will be able to listen to the show. All right, we are, there I am here. Unmuted. All right, live. What say you? If you have anything to say, make sure you, you be here for Patreon next week. I'll be, I mean, for Friday. We'll talk about it. We're in a new month, uh, which started Saturday sundown. We're in what we would call the seventh month now. A change of fall happened Saturday sundown. So we're in the seventh month. Oh, there he is. Oh, 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 there he is. Oh, let me bring Elder Gaja in the house. Hold on. Let me bring him in here. Uh, participants. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can add a caller. There he is. Did I merge him in? Shalom. El Shalom, Elder Gaja. Elder Gaja in the house. Where you at, young man? I'm right here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Oh, I can see you, but you know, you, you put, put you need to put some more light on you. Yeah, the light, the lighting is very, very, very dark. <laughs> what you, what you in the car? That better? 
Yes, sir. Uh, I guess you you heard the broadcast. I, I just I just clocked in just then. Um, I've, I've been having some trouble logging on. Just just got the last bit of what you're saying right there. Yeah. So there was a video I showed earlier where people from all different parts of the world, be it from the Caribbean, Haiti, and all of that, Panama, got on. Other gadget. Let me here you go. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, they got on news programs throughout the United States saying that our people, blacks in America, shouldn't receive reparations. So my question is, could black Americans or Judah, could we go into other countries like Haiti or Jamaica and tell the Jamaicans what they can't get? Yo, hey, Elder, check it, right? Check it out. That that, that 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 is crazy in of itself. You with me? Yeah. That's such a crazy conversation. And and check it. I saw right, and and, and I'm not talking about something that I, I heard. I've I know somebody who crossed over the border that they let in, that they let into, they let into into America like that. I mean, I have never seen anybody show up at a border and get processed, get get stop 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 illegally and get processed and put in. So. I think I think there's a propaganda a propaganda wheel, something going on where they're telling these people that yo you need to say all of these things for us to give you ad, ad, admission into this country. You with me? Mm. Because that don't even, that don't even make sense that that you would come that black people from the Caribbean would come into America and say black people shouldn't get anything. That don't make no sense. That that that's madness. Yeah, yeah, but let's look at the other side. Would that be po- would that be possible? for us to come to Jamaica and do that. No, you, you get stoned. <laughs> he said you'll get stoned. Uh, so so, yeah. what, so what does that say about our people who continually allow this? I I I I am you know what man, it's it's a it's a deep it's a deep question in itself. You with me? Yeah. It's a deep question in itself. I believe a lot. I believe a lot of a lot of a lot of American Judah, you know, don't don't have a self of belonging or purpose in where they are. They get rolled over by anybody. Anybody comes in and do everything, especially what's going on right now with with the so-called you know the the, the, the Indians and all them that are coming into America and doing what they're doing with no with no with no recourse. With nobody saying anything. You understand me? So it it it, it deep in itself. There's a slumber going on right now that. That's unprecedented. I'm going to tell you this, and, Elder Gaja, though. And I said it during the Academy. This thing isn't going to go like they think it's going to go. Because that's why the Bible tell you about Judah. I tell you, sometime it takes us a while to figure things out. But once we know, it's on. And can't, mm-hmm. no, can't nobody turn up like Judah. That's why the Bible tell you in Genesis 49... That Judah crouched down uh, like an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? Elder, listen, I'm I'm literally 15 minutes from the house. Let me get in and call you and call okay. you back. Is that okay, okay? Do so. All right, I'll be waiting. All right, my cool. I'll call you. Call you 15 minutes. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, even God just said, no, that couldn't happen. No, no, another nation could come to the United States and tell our people what they aren't going to get. God just said, no. He says, listen, they would hang Judah in Jamaica from a light pole. If we were to go into Jamaica and speak on the radio and say, and undermine them trying to get for it politically or financially. And for those who missed it earlier, let me just play this real quick. The brother Daniel Kalua said, no. Nah. I'm not in position to speak negatively or at all politically on what's going on in the United States because black people have have done everything to give me opportunity. I can't speak something negative against Americans, black America. It's not my place. So, so, so let me tell you, so my hat's off to this brother. That's respect. But then we get people like this. I'm concerned about what's going on in black America. Uh, I'm more 
Let me get it. Then we get people like this. Actually, I could fall into that category. I honestly have called a... We get people like this. Listen to this. And there were slaves in the so Caribbean. Maybe it and we, okay, we, we didn't win. qualify for this. We, 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 well, here's the challenge. There are so many difficulties with trying to enact reparations, in part because the question is who gets them. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially, I could fall into that category. I honestly have called a pipe dream in the past, and I think that's what it is. From the Caribbean, it's a pipe dream. From this woman who have gotten an opportunity in America because of our people who built this country. It'd be nice if there was an elegant, simple solution to all sorts of complicated problems. Okay, and with the softness here, this guy's from Jamaica. This, this, this buck broken brother, unrepentant. You're not actually talking about how to fix those problems if you're only talking about reparations. If we're only debating... From Jamaica. If he tried to undermine his own people in Jamaica, they would deal with this guy. Thing that happened more than a century ago. A century ago. You see, you see what they get? These morally compromised soft men. And we're probably never going to do this. It's not clear to me why we're, we're pursuing this thing. Is it fair that... that no, there's no kind of, there's no reparations, no restitution, nothing. Should right? the Irish get reparations, by the way? Irish. She would rather Irish people get something. Need not, need not apply science when they came here. And she's also from the Caribbean, coming into the United States with the opportunity that, uh, that was afforded her through us. Through us. I can't do this in the Caribbean. Neither would I, would I, I would feel dishonorable to speak against the plight of my own brothers and sisters suffering in other countries. Here during the progressive era, I mean, how far do we want to take this down? Are we, are we acknowledging that there are ugly spots in history because 60% of the world would be entitled to slave reparations if you want? Okay, then don't, tell the Jews that for the Holocaust. to play that game. Well, here's a fact. Slavery ended 154 years ago. It's been yeah, it, it ended 100, 150 some odd years ago. A long, long time since we had slavery in this country. Uh, and you have people like my family. I'm black, but my family came to the United States in 1962. My parents are from Costa Rica. And I wonder how your parents were able to come in 1962 and what, during the time of segregation, what people were you living around protecting you? From Costa Rica telling us what we can't get. Do I get a check? I did a couple of essay contests that I actually won. And I won like NAACP Act So Award for this essay and something else. I can't remember another, like I- She's from Nigeria. End up winning money. And the essay was, um, do you think black people should, have repar should get repar reparations? And I was like, no, you didn't work for it. And she said it with her chest. No, you ain't worked for it was um do you think black people should have repar should get repar reparations and i was like no you didn't work for it we work for your behind to get here see we we fought against oppression to give you an opportunity why are you so against reparations Valerie, it's a man. And folks, we've been talking about this for how many years? It's like somebody got this off a of VHS tape. Of a waste of time. We this guy from Panama, being from the tribe of Zebulun, said it's a waste of time. Got so much to do. And yet you have people who invest so much energy and attention on what I consider to be a dead end idea, a dead end movement. If we were to pay. And then we got Saucy Santana's uh, 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 nephew here. Reparations today. We would only divide the country further. We would... He, he believed what Taino from, from Puerto Rican. We only divide... And you notice they're using all the soft men to oppose this. So that these guys can get sexual access and they think they're in a private club that's above their own people insult many black Americans. So you are an insult. 701 area code. Let's go down the line. 
Shalom. Shalom, Edward Carr. How are you tonight? I'm blessed by the best. What say you? You are very blessed by the best. His name is Ahaya. That's what I say. <laughs> yes, it is. Let's talk. Uh, I'd like to start this conversation out by saying you have to con science before you can grow a consciousness. <laughs> con science, that's good. Mm hmm. Just thought of that last night. Okay, you so I'll share it with some hope. Okay. What say you? Have anything to say on the topic? Um, reparations, apparently, at some point in time, you know, I let us borrow from these people that we borrow from the Egyptians. So I would assume at some point in time, some form of reparation will come through. Well, well what say you about Ka Kamala? Be? Uh, Kamala, the, the South Indian, who said that uh, if the if the bill came to her desk on first day, she would sign it. How was that pop? Uh, is, is, isn't she in Biden? President and vice president right now? What, ceremoniously? I'm saying ceremoniously. I'm just saying <laughs> if, if what they if what they peddled to society was true. And they had the power to do so, right? Wouldn't they mm -hmm. do it? Wouldn't they do it before the election? Yes. Okay. All right. Any, anything else you have? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Uh, last time we spoke, we were talking about uh, Elon. Then we went to Albert Einstein and. Um, Arthur Balfour and them building that college on Mount Scopus in Israel, which was known as the Mount of the Watchmen. Yep. Oh, in 70 AD, they used that mountain as the um, as a base of operations to take the city. And I just find it completely mind blowing that. Arthur Balfour and Albert Einstein set up a college on that mountain in order to, you know, do what they did there on a mountain that we were using to make sure, you know, we would be safe from them. Well, believe it or not, they're using it. believe it or not, for the last, since I've spoken with you, I've been, mm -hmm. do, I've been, I've been doing a private study on Mount Scopus. And what I've found, what I've found, it, that that it's 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 a portal there. Ooh. So we're gonna talk Makes about sense. this. I'll, I'll talk to you about this Friday. There's a portal at Mount Scopus. Okay. Jeez. Oh Holy yeah. Shot. <laughs> and it, it's similar. It's similar to the uh, the portal that the Vatican commandeered, commandeered, and took control of over in Arizona. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what they did here, they also did to the North American Indians. What they did over there, they also did with the spirits coming through that gate over here in North America. And we'll talk about that very soon. I'm still doing a study on that, but you, you open up a can of worms with this one, buddy, and it's big. All right? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And one last point. Go ahead. <laughs> one last point is um, I've been able to pinpoint by exact location the the um, prophetic lands that were taken by the sons of Esau, and I'm just saying this as to like if today we, I were to go and ask a person from Scandinavia, like, hey, what's your heritage? Oh, well, I'm Scandinavian. Well, now I can use this information to be like, okay, well, since you're from Scandinavia, then nine times out of ten, this is your lineage back to Esau, and that's your, you know, your progenitor. So hopefully I could share that information with everyone else. Okay, and, do, do, you, know, do you have it? Through this. Do you have yeah, it? Yeah, I have it on my phone. I, yeah. Okay, put it. I can put, send it to you. Listen, put it together, right? Like, like, have you mm -hmm. been in the academy with bullet points? Yes, sir. Okay, put it okay. together I've through, got all through that. bullet points with all the sources and send it to my email as soon as possible. 
gathering as one, the number one at AOL.com. And I also used um, the Legend of the Jews on oh. the GOCC oh. library okay. and the Edom in Germany. So, yeah, I used all that information, information from the academy I've gathered. And I've been able, like I said, pinpoint accurately. Okay, well, yeah, these ones went to this Jephetic land and hey, now they call it that. Bro- bro- brother, that's cold. I need that now. I'll go to sleep on that one. Absolutely. Gathering is one at AOL.com. Put it together in a little study, bullet points, and send it to me tonight. I will do that, Elder. My brother. Hey, hey, nothing like studying. I really appreciate you. Mm, All right. Greatest thing in the world. Got to study show ourselves approved. Hey, brother, the more you dive in, the more you you search, the more the most high will will send. That's just the way it is. My brother. I love him for it. All right. I'll talk with you soon. I really appreciate you, brother. Shalom, Elder. Shalom. Great call. Uh, Yerod has a question. Shalom, Elder. Shalom, Yerod. What say you? The floor is yours. Uh, so on the topic, um, when you look at the closing uh, verses on Deuteronomy 28, when it says that no man will buy you out. Yeah. You know, it's my understanding that we know the Almighty, he says the gold is mine, the silver is mine, you know, the cattle on a thousand hills. When he says no man will buy you out, I just feel oh, like, oh, oh, well, well, let's, you know. Let, let's, I, not, let's not deal with what we feel. Let's deal with what the scriptures gotcha, say. Gotcha. Let me get the scripture. Roger, Roger. All right. Understood. Well, when we read that and it okay. says buy you out. Okay, listen. It doesn't say buy you out. It says no man shall buy you. Buy you means redeem. That means redeem, right. No man no, will redeem you out. Yeah, because that's Christ's position. It was through his blood that gives us mm-hmm. another opportunity, redeeming us back to the Father. He through his blood we're purchased. That's all that means. Gotcha. So, so, so with this verse right here, when it says that you will go into Egypt again, you know, by ships and yeah. wood and stone and, yeah. when, you know, speaking prophetically about what was going to happen, do you think, or is there scripture to support a so-called set of reparations that may come? Or is our promise, you know, the kingdom, the kingdom to see, come? See, but here's, here's the whole deal. Mm-hmm. It, it's not an either or here. What you're saying is you're, you're presenting it like it's either this or that. When it could be this and that. Like, gotcha. it's, you, it don't have to be one or the other. That's how you present it. This is not saying that they can't give us reparations. Because there's a, there's a biblical precedent that's set according to the Bible what they're supposed to do. Now, now if they don't, it just speaks to their hypocrisy, which brings their, their judgment to a head quicker anyway. Because their empire can only go, go on as long as we go along with it. See? <laughs> so, so it's a catch-22 right. for them. Because, because right, they're ruling, they're they're in control by default anyway, exactly. right? Exactly. Because and it's the through the deception of our people believing in the system that 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 keeps their empire continuing. But when you show their exactly. hypocrisy, where our people begin to back off and not support it, it shortens their particular rulership. So they're in a dichotomy here. So it's that scripture isn't saying that they can't do reparations. I'll tell you this. If they could find a way to do reparations and sustain their power so to keep us under them, they would do it. But I'm going to tell you when they do it, how they're going to present it. I'm going to tell you right now. The only way they, they'll give our people reparations if it comes with us taking the mark of the beast. 
Mm. <laughs> I believe they're going to kick it down the road and give a caveat to say, well, okay, under this system to get access to this money, you need this particular currency. Now, they'll give it to us. Mm. But it'll come with a compromise. And then it's going to be up to whether or not our people realize, well, okay, whether or not they're willing to do that. But we're, we're nearing a cashless society. And I believe that they're going to kick it down the road until they link it into, well, you can get all these credits if you get the mark of the beast. Isn't that reparations? And the answer is no. Cut a check before that. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. I I, I agree. I uh, agree. I don't yeah. I don't think they'll do that though, like you said. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. But either way, the president have been set, Judah is awakened, and now everyone is falling on code. And this is beyond political lines and everything else. It's the most high through the spirit of the most high that people, our people are having the same conversation together in this earth at this time. And on, how, th 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 let me tell you, this is how close we are, my brother. When has it ever been a time where our people were able to all stand together and understand, understand those who were undermining us the whole time? That's a step. Never, not, never, not on, not on this precedent, not on this level. That in of itself is moving, is, is moving this thing towards a cataclysm because now our people no will no longer operate. If we don't operate in this political process, this system is done because it was set up to keep us on the bottom. And if we decide not to participate, there's no need for the system. And this is what they fear. See? Thank you, my brother. Great, great, yes, uh, great question, though. Great question. All right. See, whether they give it to us, to a, to us or not, it's good that we're here with information to point out their hypocrisy. That in of, right. it, that in of itself will move our people in the right direction towards the most high to not believe in a system and now more so fall back in believing on what we walked away from because really there's no choice it's one or the other when 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 the when the hypocrisy of this world is actually exposed we can't in good honest operate with the system like we did in ignor ignorance <laughs> right so then it, 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 it eventually leads us back to the same place. Well, if, if I can't trust in the government, then what are my options? Now you're in the right place. You're in the right frame of mind at that point. Right? They, they need to make keep us believing in the system, folks, because the system is a religion in of itself. They're not, they're not telling you. The system, the whole government, the way things are sh structured in these governments, folks, it, this is a religion. They're politics. And they, and they need to continually have us believe there's hope. You'll hear this over and over again. Hope. There's hope. We need to dream. Hope. So you can believe in something. But when you start realizing the whole thing is a fraud, it's a farce, then you'll begin to say, well, I put all my hope into this, and this thing is a sham. And at that point, you're in the right place because then you'll, you'll be asking for what is the alternative. And folks, that's where the Most High comes in at. He's just been waiting, up, waiting for us to wake up concerning this wicked empire. And now, he'll open an option now greater than this farce. Okay? At that point. All right? Let's go down the line. Uh, I had, Jerron has a comment. Jerron. Hello, how you doing? Can you hear me? I, I can hear you fine. Mm -hmm. How are you, sir? I'm good. Shalom, brother. Shalom. Hey, um, I, I want to actually piggyback right off what the brother was just talking about. And, uh, 
tie it back into, uh, you know, the lesson that you're talking about. Um, basically, I feel like the scriptures already said that the kingdom was in us when the children of Israel asked when it was going to be the end of the world. The kingdom is in us, and faith was dead without works. The scriptures also said that we was going to come out of here with a great substance. Christ is literally telling us that you got to do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? When we look at what happened when they basically blocked the, the bill in California, that was basically Okay, hold on, hold on. You, you just said something, though. You said what Christ said. Now, you make... Yes, we, Christ no, no, listen, when you make quotes like that, we can't just let you skip back over without straightening that out. Christ said you're going to do what with yourself? Uh, Christ said that the kingdom was in us. And that um, he said we was going to come out of here with a great substance. Yeah, yeah, but what you said after that about oneself. We got to do it ourselves. I, I mean, not like we can't give ourselves reparations like in a way like we know Christ is going to do all these things for us, but faith is still dead with our works. We have to keep game what's happening politically, and we have to uh, basically – act on that like, like the way i see it the, the reason why i was blocked is because of the black caucus the, the the woman you mentioned earlier she's a part of the black caucus most of the people that's inside of the black caucus are not foundational black americans they are not of the people who actually suffered in america they the yeah. people who came over they are brothers and sisters in the other tribes okay many of them so they feel so it doesn't benefit them yeah they like you know especially the ones that's not in the truth the ones who don't know the most high Okay, okay, well, let, let's unpack it real quick, right? Everything you're saying is correct. But the good thing about this is we can see them now. Exactly. Right? So because we can see them, their undermining mind in us doesn't have the same effect. Because now we know what we're up against. Now... Our people, and I see it right now, our people are opposing these the, these these taskmasters. Be it Roland, at one time, Roland Martin and all these people were able to undermine us without us even realizing what they were doing. And now, they're, they're being faced. If you're going to be their lackey, then now, you're the one that ha you're going to take the licks for standing in the gap. See, and, the, and listen, that's where, we, at one point, we didn't recognize that they existed. But our people are now stepping to rolling now. Our people are now pointing, we never did this before. So it's still blowing the lid off of this facade called America and showing that their true intentions through their so-called democracy is to keep Judah on the bottom. And I believe our people are waking up to that. That this system isn't set up with equal opportunity like they've claimed for years. And there's no hope the way things has been with us moving, moving the needle, believing in a system that have, that, that have been constructed to keep us on the bottom. So the good thing about this, brother, is that more and more of our people are waking up concerning it. That's the good part right. about it. Now, whether or not they give us reparations, hey, it's a caveat if they do. But the fact that they won't points out their hypocrisy and that in of itself will begin to wake even more people up concerning what this system has really been constructed for. And that's my point. <laughs> right? You know, Elder, I, I want to say, I, I agree with you, Elder. Yeah. Um, I think that the kingdom is in us as well, though. I believe uh, bro that, brother, like, it, we can, brother um... listen, it has always been in us. Again, like I told the brother before you, this is not an either or conversation. What I'm doing is what we're doing here, brother, is dropping wisdom to show the hypocrisy of a nation who sell us one thing, but really they're in place to do something else. So the kingdom, mm -hmm. the Christ said the kingdom mm -hmm. is within us. Okay, let me tell you, we've always survived against all odds with the deck 
stacked against us. We're resourceful, okay? So whether whether they give it to us or not, brothers, brother, a remnant gonna survive through this. But what we're doing, and listen to it, brother, and this is where the wisdom comes in at. See, Christ says that, Christ says that I send you out to be fishers of men, right? So if you're going to be a fisher of men and you understand that they use and they have their political machine turned up on 1000 right now. Everything is politics. Everything. Like I stated, it's a religion in of itself. So why not use this particular signal and get on it to show people it's a farce. Okay. And I'm using reparations in those conversations as a talking point that gets us there because if the kingdom is within us, the less people we have believing in this system to realize what it is, that's more of our people, a part of this kingdom working with us. They'll give up on this system, and now the king. Now we have more working towards the kingdom with us. You got it. <laughs> well, I got it. Yeah. So all okay, of, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, but, but you're right. Like, like, listen. It's counterproductive. If they could do it and still sustain the same type of power over us, they 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 would have done it a long time ago. But it goes against the interest of the Gentiles. The interest of the Gentiles is to have us through that through our fall raise in riches above us financially. So it's in the Gentiles' interest for us to stay under sin, so to have our God against us, therefore they are incentivized as Gentiles to become what? Overlords over a sinful nation. So if we really want to fix this above all wholesale. It's more so about our people coming back to our law and getting on code with the law, statutes, and commandments we walked away from, in a nutshell, that's and being right. on code with one another. That's really what, that's, that's, that's the solution, okay? Thank you, my brother. Mm -hmm. You got it, my brother. All right, All right great. Okay. All right, Do I, did I see uh, Gaja back in the house here? Uh, let's see. Hey, Gaja, you can call back and I'll merge you back in. All right. Devin has a comment. Thank you, Jerron. Great point. And yes, we all getting ready to camp this year. It's going to be great. This tabernacles. Hell yeah. Be out there in the wilderness amongst my brothers and sisters praying together, eating together. And I know all the children, they look forward to this time of year. <laughs> all right. So. It's going to be a blessing for the feast this year. So, all right, Diggle Gaja there. Hey, Gaja, let me go through these calls. Shalom. Shalom, and I'll bring you in. You made it home. Are you in England or Jamaica right now? Jamaica, Jamaica. Did you hear about this new law uh, for traveling in the United States now, traveling from the United States over into Europe? I know what they're saying. Listen to what the Tin Horns are saying. They're putting this out there without any fanfare. When you go to travel plan, Gaja, mm -hmm. when you go to travel plan, it's, it shows here. Hold on, let me get it here. When you go to travel plan, it says... Americans will have to get fingerprint fingerprinted and registered traveling to Europe from traveling to Europe from November. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. For years, Americans have been allowed to enter most of Europe unrestricted. Now they're letting all people come over to America unrestricted. At the same time, they're restricting Americans. Listen, <laughs> for years, so they want to put us in a in a hot pot, pressed by all these people, 
without being able to freely go to other places like these immigrants are coming here. For years, Americans have been allowed to enter most of Europe unrestricted without overly strict checks or entry permits required. In some airports like Charles de Gaulle in Paris and Flamacino in Rome, they're even allowed to use e-gates upon landing like they're Europeans. So it was okay when Europeans were doing this, right? When white people were doing this, it was okay. It wasn't until our people began to travel. Now listen to this. Starting from November, however, they will be faced with additional bureaucracy. Following years of deliberation, the Brussels-led bloc is finally reforming its border policy to meet the challenges of modern times, from security threats to irregular migration. Mm. U.S. passport holders will not be exempt from further scrutiny when flying into the zone. Listen to this. Starting November 2024, around the same time of the election now, so who knows what they're cooking up that would need heightened security measures internationally before the election. That's what I'm looking at. I believe the Democrats, the Democrats will do anything to stay in power. Listen to this. Start in November 2024. If you're an American, you should expect to get fingerprinted and registered upon crossing the European border. And there's just no getting around it. Why is Europe tightening border checks for Americans? As, a conf as confirmed by, by, by Yiva Johannesson, the European Union Commission Commissioner, the much delayed entry exit system of the European Union will launch on November 10th in an attempt to modernize the continent's border and strengthen secure security. Listen to this. In case you're still wondering with ESS entails, it refers to biometric system that will use a traveler's digital photograph, personal information and fingerprints to control their border movements. Now, America, you can't control the borders here, right? But when, when Americans say, listen, it's getting too hot here. It's time for me to go someplace else. Well, no, nah, you can't have no asylum seeking for you. Mm. Listen. Hey, hold on. Yeah. Quick question. As an American, right? Yeah. When you, when you, when you travel into America, when you come from overseas and you come back into America. Yeah. Do they buy, do they fingerprint you at the border? No. Right. No. And another thing is usually if you go to Europe, just say if you were, if I stayed, if someone stayed, they really were lenient on Americans for long, you know, for the longest. Knowing that if you got an American passport, why would you want to stay in Europe anyway? When you have a, <laughs> when you have a, a, a greater variety in a greater country to go to. So they never really pushed against America as long as the leniency was both ways. But now. Yeah, as a, as, a, as a British, as a European coming into America, you get fingerprinted and 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 um and biometric, but retina right, right scan as yeah. a European coming into America. Yeah. So it, it, it and and America started to do that from two thousand and three. I think yeah. two thousand and four. I think they started it on January the first, two thousand and four. So it took Europe twenty years to do the reverse. Yeah. Be yeah. Because it was being done in the reverse by America anyway. But here's mm -hmm. the issue. You know how if you in Europe. And just say if you stayed two months and, and decided you want to stay and see your family for a little longer, instead of getting read up, you would probably go to Rome or go into another country, Spain or something, and then come right back and that would give you a fresh three months. Yeah. No more. Yeah. See, America used to be like that as well. In America, is, uh, up until 9-11, they used to, you should be able you 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 because uh, I remember I remember staying there I remember staying there right up to because I used to get ninety days into the country and I used to stay right on like eighty nine day fly to Bahamas and come back with no issue but you can't do it, you, you can't do it anymore so yeah the, the, the tightening up 
Yeah, yeah but go, go ahead. But they're doing the same thing, which means if you go into London and you leave after two months and go into another European country, you're still being counted towards the three months regardless of you re-entering. It doesn't matter. You have to go back to right. America. First mm-hmm. of all, you would have to give, get your visa set in America before you even get there. Mm-hmm. And then you can't stay anywhere in Europe. Even if you leave England and go, just say you go to Cyprus for a few yeah. weeks, that's still counted towards your three months and you would still need to go back to the United States to re-up. Mm-hmm. So I'm just keeping yeah, the, my eye the, on it. And it's, yeah, it's the treat, they're treating like one border now. They're treating the whole Europe like one border. Like one border, the whole Europe. That's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And they're picking up cues from what the United States did. But I'm showing you the hypocrisy internationally. It's the international body that's green lighting all these illegals coming into America without any resistance. But yet they're tightening up Europe. Mm-hmm. I need y'all to check that out, right? But but real quick, let me... remember the elder. Remember, it yeah. all goes back to the beast for one hour. So yo, they they need to blow Babylon up, and then they well, pardon yeah. pardon the language. They, hey, they hey. need to sink Babylon, yeah, <laughs> to bring the power back to Europe. That's what's happening right now. That's where we at. Power is going back to the Ten Horns. Mm-hmm. Right, but hey, here we go. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. let, let me go down the line real quick. Real quick. Show me. Oh, all right. Uh, Deshaun has a comment and or question. Yes, Deshaun. Good evening, Elder. How are you? I'm doing well. One second. One second real quick. One second. One second, okay? Okay, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can. Give me one second. I'm going to I'm going to put your voice on the on the uh I'm going to switch up the audio device one second. So that Gaja can Gaja and lawyer can hear you at the same time, okay? Gotcha. Uh studio display. Okay, say something. Hello? Yes. Yeah, the floor is yours. How you doing, Deshaun? I'm doing all right, Elder. Uh, first off, I want to give all praise to the Most High in the name of Yeshai, Baha Shem Yeshai, Awarak, Hakodesh. Um, I, I just have a question, Elder. I'm 28 years old, and, um, you know, in all honesty, I, I stay at home with my father. And, um, you know, he's of an older generation and of, of a time and period of where people still believe in voting and stuff. and. I, I was just calling to ask you specifically, what would you say to a lot of people who still have stock in the system, who who still believe that because that they got some of their student loans paid off or whatever have you, whatever benefits the system has given them, that they still believe in voting because, you know, I'm being pressured by my family members to, um, you know, participate in the voting process. And obviously, you know, some of our people will come up to you and say, are you registered? Are you registered? And um, we're in that time time of the year. Um, and I also wanted to make the point that um, what are some things that, you know, young men like such as myself can be doing so that we can, um, you know, bring forth the kingdom, um, especially in, in times such as these. Uh, what city and state you live, you live in again, brother? City and state? I live in uh, Durham, North Carolina, um, but but I'm currently in Virginia on, on a work trip. Okay, well, if you live in Durham, get with the church we have in North Carolina and uh, become a part of the ministry. Okay. Go out and teach, give out flyers, talk to others on the street while speaking. And uh, that's how you okay. deal with it there. You, 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 you know, we would actually allocate a work for you to do it within the ministry. Uh, that's number one. So I would say that because, you know, we have that set up for you young men to actually do some work. Now, when it comes to your parents, there's nothing we can do about the generation that came before us, really. You can't put new wine in old bottles. And the whole thing Mm -hmm. is, it's just that only thing they have right left is that old civil rights uh, constituency 
that unfortunately, you know, that constituency is dying off to a degree where it doesn't have the same impact. That's why they're bringing in the immigrants so to keep the balance between the Democrats and the Republicans. So there's nothing you can do about them when it comes to their belief in the system because, you know, they're asleep, right? So I would leave it there, not so to not ruffle feathers, because why? Because you're in their home. Now, I believe if someone is going to be a part of the process, it's a private process. You don't have white people and other people publicly shaming their own, their own family and all that because they believe differently. So something is wrong with our people pressuring others to think politically like they do. Now, if you have to participate in the process, when you move the curtain, young man, they don't have to know what you're doing. Guess what? You can put yourself on the ballot. You can put you can put your Shia on the ballot if you want. Okay? You don't have to vote for none of them. You can actually put whatever you want on the ballot. They don't have to know who, who you went for. You can put yourself on the ballot. So, so if you live it in your father's house, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. They under they under a, believe it or not, a spell every four years. It's a religion. So don't rock the boat because right after the election, right after the election, they're going to wake up out of their psychosis and go on with their life for the next three years uh, like, like voting never happened. So, exactly. so here's the reality. Don't rock the boat. Don't argue with them. If they're going to have you go in there, you don't got to tell them who you're voting for. Put your Shia on the ballot. Okay? And don't vote for none of those people. It doesn't matter. Local, don't do down ballot. You go in there, and you, for everybody else, every, whether it be Senate, Congress, judge, whatever that, just put yourself on it. That's it on that. Okay? <laughs> That's understood. That's understood. Thank you, Elder. All right? Don't ruffle any feathers because yes, sir. it's like, that's what it is. Every year, it's, 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 it's this time in Christmas where people go into a psychosis. Christmas time, they go into mm -hmm. they go into that spell until the ball drop and wake them out of their out, out of their spell, out of their hypnosis. So it's 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 Christmas, and then when the ball drop on New Year, they wake up and go on with their life like nothing happened. Same thing with an election. Okay, the day after the election, you have your you have your father back. All right. Yes, sir. And be wise as serpent. So you can go in there. Listen, listen, just go in there and, you know, don't vote for none of these people. Put put Christ on the ballot. All right? <laughs> yes, sir. Sh Shalom. But at least they'll know. Shalom. And man. what's good about this, by doing it that way, at least they'll know that you had the opportunity and you dealt with the process and didn't choose them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, brother. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, All right. Man. All right. There's nothing we can do about those civil rights people. I mean, I mean, listen. It's like you know, the Democrats. Only thing the Democrats have to do is 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 is, is uh, do fried chickens and, and collard greens with 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 ham hocks in it, and to have everybody there with ham ham hocks and greens uh, for the voting process. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't have that's our reparations right there you, I put I put I, I put hammocks in the greens what you want that, that's reparations <laughs> <laughs> what you want I could have gave you these greens dry now <laughs> alright <laughs> right. we got sunshine and then Hannah has a question. We're gonna end it there. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Hi, hi, Elder. Hi. How you doing? So well. Hi. How you doing? So well. Hi. So well. Hi. Elder. Hi. So well. Hey, hey, sunshine. Elder, 
Sunshine. Hello? Hello? Yes? Hello? You, you know, you, you, hey, sister, sister, you, <laughs> hey, s s Sunshine, you know, you know, Kamala, you know, Kamala wash her greens in the tub. <laughs> Kamala wash your greens in the tub, girl. Watch out. And don't worry about it. Hillary brings the hot sauce. Hillary brings the hot sauce, and she wash your greens in the tub. I'm, I'm going to give you something to laugh about. Go ahead. I, I, got, I got to pull that up, man. But go, go ahead, sister, go ahead. <laughs> okay. well, Elder, okay. While there is, there is a stream of ungratefulness that we see amongst all those who James borrowed and have stolen from Israel, and all the goodness, morality, civility, dietary, and health benefits that the nations have received by virtue of sojourning with us, or hanging around the children of Israel has been claimed, and we the people who these virtues originated with receive no respect, honor, or gratitude, or any kind of recognition or compensation for what life we have contributed to the world. And in fact, we are displayed on media throughout the world as the lawless, base people so that the name of Israel and our, our, our ideals and righteousness would be no more in remembrance. And with the lies stacked against us, um, um, who we are um, as the children of Israel and the lies stacked up against what we have contributed to the whole world and even the lies stacked so we can be dog eat dog amongst one another. All the while, the whole world has grown in wealth and influence, thriving on our spirit, intellect, capacity, and God-given creativity. And without reparation, we then see a blatant admission by the perpetrators in actions, in broken promises, and in partiality, like Elder Lori was saying, and non-repentance or, or no remorse. So if, if these empty words and partiality has happened once before to destroy us without renouncing it, the same can happen again, and it's happening again as injustice and generational curse. And instead of fairness, so-called equality for all, straight across the board, there's the delusion of entitlement to our essence our labor, um, and, and it was done for free and forth. So it has become an expectation for us um, to do things for everybody else, and even including the paid hirelings and lackeys to become perpetual payers against our own interests, against ourselves, and against our prophetic rise. And the same morality and civility that is expected for all nations is Stories not honored cooking. or justly given for our turn. But but the same slanders that have been set upon our people are coming in full view and being placed on those who have handled us or mismanaged us in their multiple hypocrisies. And this halt um, not to accept the true Christ and his people, not to give back what is stolen, not to operate in fair and just um, grounds is bared naked to the bones. Their nakedness shows all unrighteousness, and now the acquired and 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 stolen seats of morality have become worldwide vacancies. Come on, the come on, wrap it up now, wrap it like up. <laughs> Land the plane, land it. <laughs> land it. Land the plane. And, 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 and the prophecy. Oh yeah, I'm just to say, Elder, that um, all of this oppression. Um, of the poor righteous man is coming to an end and we know that this shift in tide means that Judah on the bottom will rise to the there, top. There it is. Oh, rising to the top. There it is. Rising to the top. Up to the top. There it is. Blessed. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Sir. You got to come get your girl, uh, Kamala, man. You got you to you gotta own Kamala, man. She's from Jamaica. <laughs> She's from Yo, Jamaica. Me? Oh, no, you gotta no. you, you gotta own your girl. Come get your girl. Uh, Come get her because listen, she's about to, she's about to show you how to do some greens. Hold up. I, I know y'all do it over in Jamaica like this, man. Hold up now. <laughs> in the pub? <laughs> I'm about to play it. <laughs> Come get your girl. She's gonna show you how to put, put your foot in some greens. How you gonna tell us from the south on how to do some greens? What she put curry in her greens? Cumin? Oh, what you put cumin in our greens? Let's see what's going on here. Set the flies up. I don't give a fuck. Fry oh, it up. Oh, let, let, oh, let, let me get it here. Let me get it. <laughs> One second. Come get your girl. Let me see. 
about her doing her greens in a tub. Hold on, oh, excuse me. That was the wrong one. Absolute. Right here. Hold up. That, we don't want to hear what you're saying. Come on, man. She's about to tighten these greens up for us. You ain't never hear it like this, young man. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, gosh. Hold up, hold up. Bacon. Hold up. I do bacon. She, she put bacon in her greens, man. Hold up. She put what in it? I do bacon. She put bacon in her greens, man, right? She put bacon in it. And then I, I got another one, Gaja, where, where she, she put she put it in a tub. Your, your, your mom put it put put her collard greens in the tub, got you. <laughs> and you, you said, listen, and ba based on what I'm seeing right here, I'm not gonna question that. If this is this is how they get down over in the East Indies. Yes. After you wash yes. up up in the tub, how can you be you, you you sit your behind up in a tub? And then you say, hold up, where those greens at? Yeah, let me tell you something. I've been, I've been, <laughs> hold up. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, they, 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 let me, let me, let me talk to them. Oh, oh, there you go. A after sweating like that, and then you get in that tub and say, hold up. Let me, let me season my greens with what just went down. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Let, listen, listen. Don't take the water. Don't let the water go down. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to season this thing for you. But go ahead. Yo, listen. I was in. I was in Delhi. In in twenty. I think it was two thousand nine. All right. Worst place I've ever been on the earth, and I've been around the earth. Okay. Yeah. India. India is the worst place on the planet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Mm. Yo, and I, and, I, and, I, and I say that without apology to nobody. The worst place on the planet. You see, with the advent of social media, right, a lot of people seeing a lot of stuff like the street food and all that, but that's, yo, that, that's a cakewalk for them. That's nothing for them over there. You with me? The, 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 the level, you see? So uh, how do you oh, make... Go ahead, I'm listening, go ahead. I think I think it was um I think it was it was it Friday's Patreon and you were talking about the gods over there like Hanuman. The oh, oh Hanuman, yep. Yeah. Yo, there's an entire there's a there's an entire statue, like a like a Nephilim statue over there of him that they go and pray to every day. I saw, I saw that in Delhi. Okay? In Delhi, like a big statue. Yo, the place, yo, we saw some things out there in the fields with the cows. Yo. India is the worst place. I've you mean ever with the cows? What, hey, hold up, Gaji. What are they doing with the cows? You know, cows are sacred over there. Yo, listen. They were behind the cows, doing things that they should not be doing behind the you, cows. You, you, okay, so they're doing unlawful activity that yeah, God, yeah. that God, that God said no about in the Bible. God yeah. said no to okay. do, doing this with a cow. So, so just, just, just if I can, if, if, if I can give you what's going. On. Yeah. The cows. They've been drinking that. That's what, That's what's going on over there. Okay. I went to a spot, seen them do that. Okay. Yo. Um. When we, we went, we went to Agra. This is so. So this is where the Taj Mahal is, in Agra. Yeah. And I saw. I saw. I saw. All right. You remember that movie that came out a couple of years ago called um, Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah. So what some dog millionaire did was romanticize all of that nastiness. When you get there, it's a thousand times worse than what you're seeing. It's, it's wicked. Heights of wickedness over there. And it would it, it's like with the, you see, everything makes sense now with the truth, you know. But with the truth, you understand that they're dealing with idols. You with me? And that's the, that's what that, that's the rankingness that comes with that with that, with, that, with that idolatry. You with me? The, the, and, 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 and how the sect and, and the class systems where you'd have, where, you know, it, 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 it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's really bad. Worst place I've ever been in, in, on the earth. It's a rough deal and, over there. Re real quick, Gaja, yeah. 
I had to go to Com I had to go to Kamala's page. Go come get your girl. She says she's from Jamaica. Her father's okay. Hold on. Check it. Let me as a Jamaican. Let me put it out there that we do not we do not endorse, acknowledge, accept. Or, 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 or think um, Kamala Harris represents us, okay? Okay. Let me put that out there right now. I'll put okay? it out there so, because she's, she's about, I don't know, maybe after what she's going to tell you what she do with these greens, may switch it up for you. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> this, is so Kamala, this, is, this is Kamala Harris's page. Let's go. So how do you make your greens? Do you put turkey in them? Bacon. Mm. My grandma I do bacon. bacon. She's put garlic. Vinegar. I put white vinegar. Yes. I do. So I start with, I slice up my garlic. Uh -huh. But no, first I fry, chop up the, yeah, the bacon, bacon fry and get all that yeah. fat going. Then I put garlic, yeah. some chili peppers. Yes. There it is, man. Y'all put chili peppers in, in y'all greens over there. There's more. And then a lot of water and yeah. so a little chicken stock. And I let it go for a while. Before I put the... This is how you get the black vote, y'all. This this is how you get the black vote. Yeah, you know you know you know the, you know the old civil rights crew is sitting around the table. Listen, you don't got to tell me nothing else. She told me about those greens. That's all <laughs> I needed to hear. That's all I needed to hear that she made greens. <laughs> Yo, man, um, that that musician, what's he called? Um, oh gosh, the one that came on stage and introduced her as an African American. The first Af African American um, female president. What's he called? Um, Who? Oh, oh man, what's he called again? This rapper, young rapper, came out. I'm not even young man. Um, his name is escaping me now. But came out and introduced her as an African American. She's going to be the first African American president. I'm like, what? Man, she ain't. Listen, there's no one claiming that anywhere. Well, let, let, let me finish this. Water, it's a little chicken stock, and I let it go for a while be, before I put the greens in. And then, right, so you get that going and all that flavor, and then I put the greens in for a couple hours, then I do vinegar, and then I cheat and do a little Tabasco. No, that's okay. Yeah, cause to, but Tabasco, of all, like I like Louisiana hot sauce, but Tabasco has... Louisiana hot sauce, you take a cue from old Hillary. That right amount of oh, vinegar, yeah. yeah, and I that so that's how I do my green. I see why you're getting my uh -huh. <laughs> so that's legit, man. There's nothing to see here, she's 100% black, all right. And uh, <laughs> and, and then while we at it, <laughs> nothing to see here, you know, just go out and vote, vote for Mrs. Imhoff, Mrs. Mrs. Doug Imhoff. Okay, make sure you get that thing popping. Oh, I, I should, one thing, I, I got to go real quick, right? Uh, gotcha. Sir. We asked, we asked a question in the academy. Mm hmm Right? We know this is the husband of Kamala Harris, who we now, doing the research, her father, even though he's from Jamaica, he's never claimed Jamaican, He's really East Indian and part Irish, right? And mm -hmm. on, on top of that, Kamala's history, father's history is that he owned slave plantations. His forefathers owned slave plantations in Jamaica. So he's from the line mm -hmm. of white people who came over there and enslaved Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. Here's a question though. So when they put, Jama when he said Jamaica, they made us believe it was speaking of black Jamaica. That's that's their deception. Mm -hmm. We posed a question in the academy the other day. Barack Obama. If Barack Obama was married to a white woman, would he have been voted president of the United States? I think he probably would have been in with a white woman. Yeah, let, let, I, I, brother, I to, bro, yeah. brother, let me tell you, I'm going to see you're not either of us aren't, aren't qualified to answer that question. I'm going to ask the sisters in the chat room right now in the chat. Right. 
I'm going to ask the sisters in the chat right now. And I'm going to put this on the screen for all to see, right? I'm going to put this on the screen for all to see. Because I think you and I are going to back off it for a little bit. You know what I mean? Okay. We're, we're probably personally invested in this, this thing right now, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chat up in here, right? Right up here. Here's the chat. Here's the chat, all right? All right, sisters, only sisters. If Barack Obama was married to a white woman, would, you, would he have become president of the United States? Would, would sisters have voted for him? Yes or no? Go ahead, sisters. I think not. Miss Jackson says no. Nita says yes. Okay, that's one yes out of many no's. Right? No. Nope. Nope. Nah. We only got one. Well, we, we got Nita. Nita had to vote twice. <laughs> there's only there's only three yeses, and it's from what the same person. But the majority here, Deborah said yes. So if if Barack Obama was married to a white woman. He could have sold that on Oprah Winfrey and became president. See, no, 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 I'm saying. So I wonder then, why isn't there any pushback with old Imhoff? Where he at? Imhoff, who just campaigned the first week, separate from his wife. Her name is really Mrs. Imhoff. Why didn't she use her husband's name? Number one. And he campaigned the first week to support finances to Israel, the state of Israel. And to fight anti-Semitism is on the top of his items that he'll actually present once his wife is president. Right? Mrs. Imhoff, so why we're not hearing the same negative pushback that, that would have been out there if Obama had a white woman? Why no one cares about, you know, I'm saying this, why? People can love who they want, that's on them, but they have built this campaign, Gaja, mm -hmm. based off of race. They claim the first black woman. So they called race into this conversation mm -hmm. by pawning her off as a black woman. So since they're using race, we need to ask, well, since race is an issue, why you rarely see her public with him during the campaign, right? Think about this. You rarely okay. see her with him. I see, I see. I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Right? So let me ask you this. Why do you think, put, put it this way, why do you think there's less pushback with him being her husband than if Obama had had a white woman? Well, it's like, it's like you said, they're not really, he's not really out there like that, like Michelle Obama was with, with Barack. Why? You know, he, they're keeping him to the side because, like you said, they're using race to push it. But... But is it is it, is it would, would, do you think it will affect her when when it, when it comes out to like to the public that yo this is her husband? Yeah, yeah, because politically it would ruin her. Why? Because they're trying to point her off as a black woman, and then on top of that, the optics doesn't look good if she's running around with a Jewish white husband publicly. That really gets in the way of her doing her black collard green thing. See, so when you so 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 when you're dealing with politics, because this guy don't look like anybody making some greens for him, it gets in the way of the politics. Everybody know, listen. 
everybody know what's really going on. It's racial politics seeking to deceive Judah again. That's what this is about. But I just we just calling out the hypocrisy because I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you. Let me tell you. Barack Obama wouldn't have made it through the primaries if he had a white woman. Mm. Period. I'm going to tell you right now. Our people vote on what? Symbolism. And guess what? Michelle Obama and her family and her children, along with her husband, had much outside of Barack Obama. Michelle Obama alone, along with Barack, was the optics in of itself. People were voting for Michelle Obama as much as they were for Barack Obama. It was the whole optics mm. of a black family that got Barack Obama elected. Mm, and see, understand. you understand? Yeah, man, definitely. So, so, so I'm gonna tell you, it shows also the hypocrisy that they do through politics. Mm -hmm. Because why? They're not holding her to the same standard. If you're so black and down with black, where's your where's your where's your husband? Where's your black man? Mm -hmm. and, and that would be what? That would be the resonating factor to show that you are truly down with us as a black woman. See? Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation. And, 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 and the truth, and the truth yeah. is, too, when you look at it, really, you think. Well, and and, and let's, listen, listen. And I'm only saying this is because they're using racial politics and black optics to get her voted, voted in. Mm -hmm. No, but so when I'm they, saying, oh, I'm, saying, I'm saying also to, to yeah. that, black women really date outside of black men. You with me? So yeah, that's another thing. You know. See, see, but that's why that that's why. When it comes to running publicly, her husband is in what? The witness protection program. You don't see this guy. Oh, good. You don't see this guy. Now, one other thing here. And really, I would respect her more if she was on a show, uh, uh, Gaja, and say, listen, I whip up a mean chicken masala. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, that's honest. Right? Just be honest. Listen, it, it, that's honest. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, like I make a, I, I make a, a mean non bread. Okay. <laughs> we in that. Just give us the truth. All right. So I, I got to get some sleep. So I'm going to call you up in a few minutes, Gaja. Yes, okay. And, and just put it out there. I'm, I'm in Toronto this summer, so. You in Toronto? Yes, sir. This summer. Okay, that's what's up. So that's a blessing. Reach out to me. And uh, let's see if we can get you over the border. Yeah, man, definitely. All you got to do is, all, all you got to do is claim asylum. For uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, gotcha. All right. That concludes. We're in. We, we're in the month of the trumpet. And guess what? There's a lot going on between now and election time. And you know, prophecies are going to be unfolding like nothing. And I tell you, keep your eyes peeled on this particular church as we bring forth prophecy and discuss what. The conversation that lead to the delivery of the children of Israel. Thank you, elders. Thank you, elder lawyer. Thank you, elder Gaja. Blessings. blessings, blessings. Good to see you all. We're the children of Israel. And we are back. All praises to the Most High, Ahaya. Shalom and have a great evening. Sir, shalom. And I shalom. can't. And Shalom, and I cast my vote for Christ. But before we do that, hold up. Hannah is on the phone. Hold on. See if I got Hannah. Yeah, I think you are, you are going to forget about me. All right, Hannah, I'm sorry. You from Jamaica? 
No, I'm from Africa, but I have a question. Why, when are you going to sue the reparation from African countries? When are we going to what? Yes. When are you going to ask your reparation from African countries? That is, that is a good question. See, one thing that's... Yeah, good, because no, no, I am from Africa. You should ask if we weren't told you. Our ancestors, if they didn't told you, you wouldn't be in this position. Africa is... Include, include Africa in your question with your reparation. So you're saying Africa should, should pay the, the children of slaves they sold also as an African? Yes, 100%, because... There is a movie, Sankofa, you should watch it. I mean, it's it's real. Yeah, we sold you. Oh, Our that's... ancestors sold you. That's an yeah. interesting take for, for someone being from Africa, yeah, so state and just... You should, you should start with Africa. Let me ask African you this. African countries should pay your reparations. I'm glad you're bringing that out. Let me ask you this. What part of Africa are you from? What country? I am Ethiopian, but every... Every African country should pay because they let you to be in this position. And uh, the Gori Island is one uh, uh, evidence. And there is a movie, Sankofa. It's a well-certified movie. You should uh, check it out on YouTube. So the, your, your uh, problem started in Africa. So Africa should be included paying reparation to uh, African Americans. Well, that's a, sister, sister, that is a great point, but let's knock down one pin at a time. The, 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 the current, the current corporation, right? The current corporation is what our people are facing now. And then, you know, and then after that, if there's anything if that sets a president, then we can take the next step, right? But let me ask you this. How long you been following the church, sister? I always listen to you. I always listen to you. It's very interesting. Uh, but I, my friend and I, we always talk about you. When African Americans start asking their reparation from Africa, Africa is the richest continent. So they should pay you. Let me ask you this. If you think a black American being from the tribe of Judah, do you think that we could come over to Ethiopia and tell Ethiopians on television what they shouldn't get? And what would happen if we, Ethiopia? You, can our people, being a black American from the tribe of Judah, could I come over Ethiopia uh -huh. on your television when your people are actually marching for something that, that they need to survive? Can I come on the television and tell your people that y'all shouldn't get it? Oh, us? Okay, listen to me. What was the question? The question, yeah. the question is this. Listen good. Just say your people yeah. are being oppressed by your government, right? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they're actually withholding what you need to sustain as Ethiopians. Can me, being a black man from America, born here, from Judah, can uh -huh. I... Can I get on TV in the midst of your political struggle and tell your government that they shouldn't give you anything? Can I do that as an American? I, I, I think you could, but I, I don't know how, how you're going to do it. But No, listen to what I'm yes, saying. You could. If I was in Ethiopia and did that, what would the Ethiopians do? If I was to stop them from getting what they deserve and I was to say, y'all don't deserve it, give it to me. How would you? How would Ethiopians treat me? What what, the, what what is about Ethiopia? This question. No. Uh, okay. It's not clear to me. No, I'm just giving you an example because we showed earlier how others are coming from other countries who have benefited based on what we have done here in America, only to get on the news programs and say that they shouldn't give our people from the tribe of Judah reparations. And they're not even from here. When we, when we, we're they not. They shouldn't say that. They, huh? They shouldn't say that. Yeah, but, but what, what I'm saying is, if I was to do this in one of their countries, that would lead to some level of 
physical harm, I believe these people would actually, if I did that in Ethiopia, they would be waiting for me after the broadcast, don't you think? No, they shouldn't say that from other countries. That's not their business because you guys came as a slave, the whole world knows. So you, you between your government, nobody, put, uh, nobody should put their finger. We're just an immigrant. Thank you, sister. You should ask your government, but uh, that's between you and your government because a black man, a white man came at the same time in this country, but unfortunately, a black man came as a slave. You mm. have your own identity, your Americanized identity. We are the government, we are the immigrants. My question is why Africa is getting cut free? Africa, we did this horrifying thing. Well, we sold you sis- our brothers and sisters. So sis- sister. ask your, start your reparation from African countries. Sister, country. sister, listen to me. No one gets away scot free. All the nations, Af- all the nations Africa who have listen, all the nations who have done this against our people, will be judged. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are yeah. you are you currently in uh, Ethiopia right now, or are you in the, the United the United States? I'm in here. Okay. Great. Great. But it's always it's always this question raised is always and there is. Uh, like a hidden feud between African American descendants of slaves and African Im- immigrants. I, I, I get it. You should be, you should hate us. I get it. But to this case to be resolved, you should ask Africa a reparation because you deserve it. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair statement. Okay, I'll tell you this. We, we are a very. Uh, grateful and gracious people. I don't think it's in our spirit to hate anyone, but I would, I would say this. I would, I thank you for your assessment and your take on this. Not yeah. too many, not too many people are willing to, to come out and say what, what, what you're saying, but let's be real. Shouldn't the other African countries, shouldn't mm-hmm. they, shouldn't they be grateful for what the children of Israel, the black man and the black woman did here in America, which have given yes, all, all, shouldn't they be grateful for yes. what we did to yes. allow justice yes. to extend, not just from America, but throughout all the world that would give you all an opportunity. And I don't hear enough yes. people from enough Africans from these other countries stating that, that, you know what, we should be grateful because don't you know what, my brother. Yeah. You know what, my brother, every immigrant should appreciate you. If you, if you, if the, your struggle hadn't been there, even myself, I, I don't know where I would be. America was a white country. It's still a white country. But you fought for us, us to enjoy this country because I flee from my country, but I'm still going to school. Thank you for what America has given me. But that that gift was came from you, from your struggle. So mm. I feel guilty that African we sold you. We should pay reparation to you, to African American descendants of slaves. I think so. You cannot just uh, ask from your government. Africa should be included in your reparation. I I don't know. I, I never heard anybody. Uh, raise this question, but as an African, I feel guilty when I, you know, I took African American study. I did my own research. We cause you all this suffering as Africans, our ancestors. So we should, our our country, our continent should pay you reparation. That's my question. When are you going to raise this question? Well, well, sister, like I said, we're facing. Really, we're facing the uh, the aggression of the Edomites first, and I'm going to tell you why. After making all these other countries third world, they're hiding behind the immigrants. They're fighting us behind the immigrants and using all other people as buffers. So instead of operating with the buffers, we, are through the spirit of truth, are taking down the source. See, 
Esau has his hand in all of the world, including Africa, and are using immigrants as a buffer to hide behind while fighting us. So what? How do we? How do we fix all of this? We expose the lies of Esau and all the other dominoes he's upholding in these nations he uses as buffers. They fall like dominoes. See? So Esau, mm -hmm. Esau would rather us fight all the buffers he's putting in front of us so that he can escape. No, we're going straight to the source and exposing his lies. And any buffer he used falls with him. And that's including those in Africa. All right, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know everything about that. Everything you were saying because I was okay. Oh, 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 hold, hold, hold up, sister. I, I gotta straighten. I gotta straighten out something I'm seeing here on, on our chat because uh, Nita, this you're halfway correct, but Ghana's right. Of, no, no, sister. I'm talking to someone else. As a matter of fact. Thank you. I'm gonna place you back on hold, but your sentiments have been have been addressed, and I thank you for your your spirit in considering the tribe of yeah. Judah. Thank you, sister. All right, all okay, right, I all I right. Thank you. I, I I have to go. I'm sorry, but call back this Friday or next Wednesday. I want to answer something. Ghana is welcoming Judah with dual citizenship, sister. I have to correct that. That whole right of return is a scam. I've read it. Okay. Ghana should have, just like Israel, have Jewish people anywhere with automatic dual citizenship without red tape. Ghana isn't offering that, okay? I know for sure, I've read the whole thing. And it's a sham when they talk about the right of return. They're seeking out black Americans from the tribe of Judah who are financially affluent. That's what they're doing. And you have to show bank accounts, tax records, and all these other things. Jewish people don't have to do that to have dual citizenship. A Jewish person anywhere automatically have dual citizenship with Israel without showing a dime. So no. A matter of fact, I'm going to roll that out and actually go to that right of return scam. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an Israelite scam in Ghana. They're talking about dual citizenship they're offering. No, they're not. Dual citizenship should, should, would be this. If they were inviting us there and say, you get citizenship and based on us selling you, here's Thank some... Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Right? On top of us selling you. On top of us selling you. On top of us selling you. Okay? You get these many acres of land in reparations for what our government did in selling you over to America. That would be proper dual citizenship. Not no, let me see whether or not we can actually cast a great net and see who has the money in America to help us. Okay, so I wanted to straighten that out. That's a, that's a sham. They're not offering dual citizenship. Dual citizenship would be without us offering anything up, our status, our finances, or anything, and say, if you can prove that you come from these shores, this is what you get come as, as a citizen walking into Ghana. That's true dual citizenship. Okay? It's a sham. With that, may the most high be with you. Stay prayed up, sin not, and keep in mind the Most High is calling back Israel. I'll see y'all Friday on Patreon. And of course, we're setting up some debates. We're going to do our debates over there. A lot of our debates because we don't want to be dealing with the censorship and all these others. If somebody come against us sideways, we would like to answer them without having to jump through hurdles when it comes to the guidelines here on this particular platform, even though I appreciate you too, the guidelines don't allow us to be, you know, to handle things like they need to be handled sometimes. So we're going to use Patreon for that with the baits unfiltered 
So if you're not a Patreon member, you want to be a part of this because this is where we're going to have those tough discussions. Patreon forward slash a gathering one four four. Again, we're going to go into Islam this weekend, exposing the racism within the, within the Islam's doctrine, within the Islamic doctrine, the racism within the theology of Islam this coming Sunday. Yeah. With that, may the most high be with you. Say prayed up, sin not. We will soon see Israel. Have a great evening. The Arabs and Africans told us Together our wives and children then sold us In the belly of these great ships we traveled in fear By the rivers of Babylon we found our brothers here Behind the rush in Colombia Ruben from Australia is in Cong, the Mexicans. From the far away, the Negroes, Benjamin, the West Indians, Levi, the Haitians. The highest gathering is